webinar session. Yes, I am Aditi. I'm currently the AVP of Pio programs at the Startup Incubation and Innovation Center, IIT Kanpur. With me, I have my colleague Shiv, who manages uh, some of the critical bio programs that we have at uh, our incubation center. So both of First, are going to be your host for uh, the webinar today. And thank you so much for uh, joining in such an overwhelming number. And I would like to extend uh, my heartfelt gratitude to all the panelists today who could take time out for uh, doing the session today and addressing all the pressing queries uh, by our medical device manufacturers of the country. So uh, medical devices regulation in India has evolved quite rapidly in the last few years. Although the medical device industry appreciates the decision to regulate all medical devices in the country, but there are concerns which have been expressed by the manufacturers related to the registration process. So in order to solve this problem, uh, AI Med uh, in association with SIIC has organized today's session where in the first half we would have some general uh, key information sessions by some of the panelists. Then we would have uh, an FAQ session we, where uh, we would be uh, addressing the queries raised by the medical devices manufacturer. And then again, uh, the la in the last segment, we have uh, uh, another two information sessions. Um, so without any further delay, I would like to now introduce uh, Mr. Rajiv Nath for officially uh, inaugurating the webinar and uh, giving a keynote uh, address to the audience. While Mr. Nath doesn't re require any uh, introduction, but for the sake of the audience who might not know him, he is the Managing Director of Hindustan Syringes and Medical Devices Private Limited. He's also the Forum Coordinator at the Association of Indian Medical Device Industry, AI Med, which represents the interest of over 1200 medical devices manufacturers of the country has contributed to making India a leading hub for manufacturing medical devices and has a uh, ha and has played a major role in the COVID-19 response of the country. With that, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Nath to give the welcome address. Sir. Thank you, Aditi. Uh... Thank you uh, all delegates uh, for joining in and all the uh, panelists for uh, agreeing to be part of this webinar. Uh, India is uh, at a very interesting and exciting time. It's uh, been, I think, uh, last two years have been quite unpredictable. And this year is going to be even more so uh, for many of us in manufacturing and exports of medical devices. So, the market is shifting from demand for COVID critical medical devices to non COVID care now, once again, like it was before the pandemic. Uh, in addition to that shift in demand, we also find that there are regulatory uh, challenges, both within India and outside of India. Within India, all manufacturers were required to go for registration of medical devices latest by May of this year on the basis of an undertaking that they will be getting an ISO 13485 certification. At a recent meeting with the CDSU, I was informed that around 900 manufacturers have registered. So we've only come to something like I would say a halfway mark. We expect more than 1800 manufacturers to register in India for medical devices out of the nearly 4,000 medical devices that can possibly be made in the country. And majority of them, we expect them to be in the class A and B category, which are the low risk uh, medical devices. These low risk medical devices will be jointly regulated by the CDSU and by the state regulatory authorities, like it was in the Drugs Act and the drug rules. The only difference being the Drug Act still remains the role of the state drug controller still remains and of his team. But what is changing now is the drug rules are changing over to the medical device rules. It to give time to the people to change to the new system. A time period was given that by October of 2022, manufacturers of these low risk devices need to get a manufacturing license. 
at a suitable time period we will come to know today dr ravikant sharma ji who is the deputy drug controller from cdsco and heading the medical device division will explain to us by when the process for applying for license is going to start because the license has to be available from october so the winter to apply for the license will be open before that we are 6 months away from that time period now but prior to that is the bigger challenge many of the states and state regulatory authorities are still not clear about the whole process so when many manufacturers are contacting the state regulator or their staff they are not getting clarity as to how to go around and achieve the required registration i am also told that uh, many of the manufacturers are challenged because uh, the cdso has got uh, multiple websites separate for drugs separate for medical devices and uh, a bit of the medical devices directives and the notifications are also in the earlier uh, the drug uh, website so there is some confusion over there so we had discussed this Uh, with the cdso and today uh, the cdso will be kindly uh, taking all manufacturers and giving a tour of the website giving information of the various kinds of forms that are required for registration explain the registration process whether you have to apply for a and b or c and d and how is the form has to be filled up what document is required to be filled with the form what is the current concession available from cdsco what they not insisting on for now and they've given dilution temporarily to help the manufacturers to at least get registered the disciplining will come later on but at least the registration should start there is complete clarity and support available from dcg and his team that there needs to be continuity of business so while having the existing manufacturers continue business manufacturers need to come forward and be compliant to the law and compliant to the rules so they must understand through consultants or by reading the rule book themselves how the rule book has to be applied many of the queries that you have in your mind you can on today's session you can ask these questions uh, some of them will be already be asked by uh, madam uh, rama venugopal ji Uh, who has compiled uh, the various uh, questions which we are getting typically from my members and seek the inputs from the regulators and the experts there is also confusion that for various kinds of products what is the classification whether you are a or b or c or d so how to go to the website see which are the classification tables over there how to find your product in the various classification categories and in case you don't find it and you have confusion what are the next steps how do you clarify it and if it is still missing how do you recommend the classification uh, whether through imed or directly uh, how it is done internationally and how it is being done in india uh, what kind of clean rooms you need for your factory if you make a non sterile product do you need a clean room or not if you make a sterile product do you need a clean room or not or you can manage the clean zone is a dust free environment enough is an air washer enough do you need air conditioning or not do you need change rooms to enter or not do you need toilets attached to the clean room or not so it has to be positive pressure in the clean room or not bacteria count and test for the bio burden on the product do you have to do that in house or you can get it done from outside do you have to hire a microbiologist what is the technical qualification you require from your staff so i know all these questions are troubling many of the manufacturers and you are challenged by them and many of you of course have already the certification many of you already are exporters so for those of you who are already exporters and already who have either icmet certification or iso certification uh, are a head start ahead they are not so much worried that's why for the last 2 3 years we have been encouraging manufacturers to seek icmet certification to be ahead of the curve but those who don't have the certification already are the ones who are i would say more challenged and they are the ones who are uh, lagging behind so 
please step forward. There are people to play the big brother role and to support you, but that may not be forever. Finally, the regulator will behave like a regulator. For now, they are willing to be a facilitator. So, but the mood can change. So it can change in the center, it can change the state government. So finally, nobody will be able to close the eyes if you're not following the law. A lawmaker will always demand that you have to follow the law and you discipline you for that. So I would request that all of you come forward, uh, take advantage of today's seminar. We hope to repeat it in about a month's time. So those of you who are able to go forward after this and register, please inform us about your feedback. Those of you who are still not able to register and find it challenging to wait through the website or the registration forms or the payment or the challenge or whatever challenges you face in the IT system or whatever, I do keep us informed and we'll do a follow on program in the next three to four weeks time to address those issues uh, once again over there. We plan to do this uh, on monthly or bi-monthly basis uh, until October uh, to help the manufacturers uh, come forward and get themselves registered and be compliant to the law. So today you are very fortunate. The head of the medical device division himself, Dr. Ravikant Sharmaji, is going to be over here along with his team. And the team is the one who basically runs the help desk. They run the uh, IT platform. So they will be available to uh, give him the support in answering your queries or to make you familiar with the IT process. We also have uh, uh, with us uh, two state drug controllers who are very much accessible and very much, uh, I would say, manufacturer friendly. Uh, Mr. Taneja, the Haryana drug controller, is himself over here. And also we have kindly uh, Mr. Uh, Koshia, the state drug controller of Gujarat. Uh, both are well known in their states and respected beyond their states by manufacturers, manufacturers who may not be making in that particular state also. We also have experts uh, like Mr. Jory, who was earlier the CEO of NABCB. And now, though he's retired, but he's working very hard post-retirement to help manufacturers be compliant and the system in India to become at par with the world's best systems. There are issues where manufacturers are led by fake certifications and by consultants who are not competent. With QCI, we are coming forward with a personal certification scheme for consultants, for trainers, for auditors. This is work in process. Mr. Jory will explain to you about that. He will also explain to you how to weed out consultants who may not really be knowledgeable and to be wary of consultants who push you towards certification bodies who will give you a certificate for 10 or 15,000 rupees, but which is a worthless piece of paper because finally the regulator will not recognize that. Finally, the regulator will seek a proper certificate from a proper certification body and there are no shortcuts for that. Your ideas for clean rooms are for classification. Another expert, Dr. Sanjeev will be addressing those queries and guide you for that. So, we look forward to an interesting session. Like you, I am myself a listener, and I'm also going to be listening over here along with you. Thank you very much. And I thank you, the speakers and the attendees, for joining in. Uh, we have more than uh, 400 participants, and we expect more than 600 participants today in this uh, webinar. Over to you, Aditi. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir, for setting the stage and sharing a glimpse of uh, some challenges faced by the manufacturers. Now I request Dr. Ravikant Sharma, but before that, I uh, introduce you before uh, you all. So Dr. Ravikant Sharma is PhD, is working on, as Deputy Director, Deputy Drugs Controller India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. At present, he is dealing, uh, sorry. At present, he is dealing with the work related to the manufacturing, import and registration of medical devices and in vitro diagnostic kits. He was actively involved in drafting the medical device revolution, which is already implemented from 1st January 2018. He has more than 25 years of experience in CDSCO and has worked in different fields like approval of IND, new drugs, import and registration of pharmaceutical blood, blood products and was involved in airport and zonal uh, office activities. Sir, you can take over the charge. 
Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for kind introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I at the outset, I like to thank IMED for organizing this workshop, the brainstorming workshop. And I think more than 500 stakeholders have joined this workshop and uh, we will try to solve the problems as per the regulations and medical device rules. And I'm really, is an honor to me and uh, for my team and it's a great pleasure to be part of this workshop and it needs to be continued in uh, future also. So I will take you, I will take five minutes. I will just set it on and uh, I have uh, with my team, uh, uh, Ajay Basil uh, is the assistant drugs controller and uh, Shamni Sridharan, she's also assistant drug controller. I have a uh, person and key person from uh, CDEC. He's the developer and the heading the medical device division, uh, this CDEC part, the Mr. Sanjeev Singh. So he will take you through the CDEC uh, problems, how you are uploading, how can you upload the fees, uh, Chalan and all these things. So, if I recall that, you know, hypodermic syringes, needles, and, uh, you know, this perfusion sets, we were regulating since 1989 as a drug. And uh, 10 uh, medical devices were notified in 2005. And these were also regulated as a, as a drug. No medical device rules were there at that time. And after uh, uh, no, 15 years, we came uh, and aligned and drafted the medical device rules with the help of the stakeholders consultation with the academia and regulators and uh, the medical device rules were notified on 31st January 2017 and uh, effected from 1st of January 2018. So uh, thereafter we, we notified four medical devices like nebulizer, glucometer and thermometer and nebulizer, then again, eight high-tech equipments like MRI, PET machine and all. These were extended on the basis of the request of the stakeholders. And finally, uh, at uh, right now, we are regulating 37 categories of medical devices. But what about those medical devices which are not under regulation, which are not yet notified? What is the fate? Who is, you know, how much quantity is manufactured or importing? What is the quality of the product, we really don't know. So Government of India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has contemplated uh, this issue and come out with the notifications. And I would like to recall the two notifications, that is 648E and 102E. 6048, we notified the medical device definition under the Drugs and Cosmetic Act 3 before uh, rule, and so that all medical devices will be under regulation but overnight you cannot regulate all the medical devices. So the notification 102E describe the phase-wise manner. As you know that medical devices are regulated as per the risk-based class, the class A, B, C, and D. So 18 months was given for the voluntary registration for all the medical devices A, B, C, and D. Then 12 months for uh, mandatory for uh, a, class A and class B, and it uh, 24 months uh, for, for class C and class D. From 1st of uh, uh, February 2020. Now, almost voluntary registration is over and medical um, mandatory registration is in progress. And from 1st of October 2022, all class A and class B medical devices will be under licensing regime. So, Today's topic is to touch upon how to apply, how to get registered the product on the Sugam portal. For your information, I would like to tell you that uh, we have classified more than 26 categories of medical devices, more than 3,000 medical devices as per the risk-based classification. And you would be happy to know that in not in a every any part of the country, no regulator is. Uh, giving such uh, doing such job. But CDSU under leadership of uh, Dr. V.G. Somani, Drugs Controller General of India and the entire team consulted with the stakeholders as per the schedule A and the regulator in, uh, the risk-based classification followed in other countries also. And we have come out 
for the uh, classification for more than 3000 medical devices. So our manufacturer can go to the website, they can see the what, what is the class, and accordingly they can submit the documents as well as the fee. So that is a there's a good part uh, that is facilitating for for our our manufacturer to file up their applications. Now what is about the laboratory, the, the testing part? So I would like to tell you that we have notified, we have rather, uh, uh, you can say, uh, government has notified five central medical device testing laboratories, which can take the legal samples. And apart from that, 21 medical device laboratories have been registered with CDSC. These are NABL accredited laboratories. So those manufacturers who do not have the facility, they can go and they can get it tested, the medical device, because quality is very, very important. You have to comply with the standards. So laboratory parties, we have a panel of the, you know, you know a, a laboratory, and uh, you can go and you can get it tested. Apart from that, as you, uh, you are aware that for class A and class B medical devices are audited by the notified body. And we have registered 11 notified bodies with us, with the register with the CDSU, and these uh, these are accredited by NABCB. So they will take charge and they will uh, go for audit. And after auditing, the manufacturing license will be issued by the state licensing authority. All the lists are in our website. Uh, my colleague uh, Shamni will take you through the, the our website today, so that you will be knowing that where is the uh, information you can you can uh, extract. So uh, as of now, we have registered, we have licensed 810 class A and class B medical devices, means these are the premises, and 5494 class C and class D manufacturing uh, 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 premises have been licensed by CDSC. The total uh, voluntary registration, importers 1100 and the manufacturers 903. We have, you know, there is a pool of the drug inspectors who have the uh, engineering background. 25 inspectors are with us. They are reviewing the application. And apart, apart from that, more than 235 medical device officers have been notified to go and audit the medical device premises uh, for class C and class D. Material vigilance program to assess the, the adverse reaction and serious adverse reaction is in place. They are collecting the data and uh, doing the causality assessment and root cause of analysis. Regarding the sale of medical devices, the notification is under process. That is the dual system. Those who are having the drug sale license in 20B, 21B, they can continue. But those who want to opt the registration procedure, they can do the registration procedure. The final notification yet to become and uh, uh, I think that will give a uh, big relief to the to the manufacturer or to the importer, those who are having the equipment uh, business. As per the medical device rules, the QMS ISO 13485 certificate is mandatory after 31st of May. So I urge that all uh, manufacturers, they should obtain uh, this ISO 13485 to get it mandatory registered and thereafter for uh, licensing regime. So this is the uh, you know outcome and whatever we have done the work. Now I I request uh, uh, Shamni to share your screen for the and she will take you through the our uh, uh, website and how to do the registration part and followed by Mr. Sanjeev Singh the the rest of the part regarding the CDEC related issues. Thank you. So Shamni, are you there? Yes, sir. So you Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. You share your screen and continue. Okay, thank you, sir, for the introduction. I will just share my screen. Uh. Uh, so is the screen visible? Not yet, but it is. Uh... It's appearing. It's appearing. It's appearing. Yes, yes, yes. It is there. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. 
fine okay so uh, good afternoon everyone all the panelists and uh, the participants i'm shamni shashidharan yeah hello I'm so sorry to interrupt you ma'am can you please put uh, your presentation in the slide show mode slide show mode yes yes ma'am um, i think you need to click on update now button the one which is appearing on okay. the top of your screen and i think okay uh so you should be able to yeah i think there is some problem um so so can i uh, uh is ajay basil there ajay could you share the screen yes yes i can try okay there is some problem with uh, my ppt uh i cannot share okay. the screen when one yeah. one person is already i will sharing. i will stop sharing Hello, Ajay. Is it uploading? It's showing that the format is not recognized. I just need to convert it to PDF and try again. Can you try? Okay. okay. Prama, ma'am, maybe uh, while the presentation is being fixed. Okay. You think we have? Uh, we can take a couple of questions from the Q and A <laughs> section. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. In the chat box, you mean? Yes, ma'am. That uh, gets into a long. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, yeah, you can continue, Shamni. It is visible. Yes. Uh. Okay, sir. Um. I'll just uh, increase the size over here. Yeah. Uh, some problem with it. Yeah, go to the next slide. Yes. Okay, is this visible? Okay, so yeah, visible. thank you, sir. Yeah, this is regarding registration of class A and class B medical devices. So first, I will take you to the uh, online, uh, the website of CDSO, the different. Uh, uh, website page, uh, the subsections in the CDFC website wherein you will get the medical device information and uh, followed by the medical devices online portal identified by Ministry of Health, Central Government for doing the registration and uh, uh, applying the uh, application for licensing and import uh, applications for medical devices, including in vitro diagnostic medical device wherein I will speak about the registration process of class A and class B, then the regarding the application forms for applying manufacturing of medical devices and import of medical devices, and the fee payment challenge required. So quickly uh, to the next slide. Uh, this slide shows about the CDSO. This is the CDSO website. Uh, there is a CDSO website link given. Yeah, so the next slide. So is it going to the next slide? Uh, yeah, so the next slide under the uh, CDSO website, you can see medical devices and diagnostic subsection, wherein you will have one tab for in vitro diagnostic medical device and the second one for medical device. So the applicant needs to click on medical device for medical device related documents, guidelines, etc. And whoever wants to check for in vitro diagnostic medical device details, one need to click for the in vitro diagnostic section. So let me clarify here because as Mr. Rajivnath 
just mentioned that this, there is a mixing of the drugs with the medical devices. It is not true. Okay, if you, sir. If you, if you go to the, our website, there is a clear cut, you know, tab, medical device and in vitro diagnostic kit. Whatever the information you, you need, you have just to click. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, under the same uh, CDSO, as uh, Sir mentioned, CDSO website gives details of all the drug section, including cosmetic, as well as for medical device and diagnostics. Once you go into the medical device and diagnostic section, the website page will show all the details regarding medical device and diagnostic. So, you can see here, you can uh, see about the medical device. It explains the functionalities of CDSO headquarters uh, of medical device division processes uh, for online application and hard file application, the organization chart, guidelines issued related to medical devices. Then you can see the medical device safety alerts published, news related to medical device, public notices issued, gazette notifications issued. So I will just take you through the next slide. If you click uh, the, about the medical devices, it will tell you how the medical device is uh, regulated under Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940 and rules therein. The next slide, it talks about the functionality. If you click the functionality, it talks about all the functions that CDSU headquarter medical devices and diagnostic division deals with. It includes the grant of certificates for import, license, permissions for conducting clinical performance evaluation, clinical investigation, or issuing test license, or you know, publishing the classifications, FAQs, etc. Under the section for processes, you will find the flow charts, uh, which will show how the process flow is set up for online application submitted by the applicant for uh, obtaining licenses or registration and the hard copy submission, how the, uh, the division is dealing with it. The next slide shows the organogram. Here you can see the organization chart of medical device and diagnostic division of CDSEO headquarter. Under the section of guidelines, you will find all the latest guidelines, doc, guidance documents issued uh, with respect to medical device registrations, medical device regist registration, or uh, the guidance on performance evaluation on in vitro diagnostic medical devices, guidance document on grouping of medical devices, etc. Now, under the section for alerts, news, and public notice and gazette notification, you can see these are the uh, one sample of gazette notification. Under the tab of gazette notification, you can see all the uh, gazette notifications issued by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for medical devices related only. So, this go back. Go yes, back. Yes, sir. Yeah, go back. So this, uh, this tab shows the alerts, whatever there are the quality issues, more than 20 alerts we have published in our website if there is a quality issue. The public notices we, we are uh, you know, uploading in our website, whether there is any, any suggestion, advice, or any directions to be given, and the all gadget notifications you can find in our website. Next. Okay, sir. Okay, ad addition to medical device and diagnostic uh, section, there is another section called notifications wherein you will file all the, find all the alerts, circulars, gazette notification, public notices issued altogether. It includes drugs uh, alerts, medical device alerts, and cosmetic as well. So this is a combined uh, notifications. You can find the details over here as well. Now this is the latest public notice uh, screenshot where you can see the list of COVID-19 kits uh, is, uh, approved for testing, uh, which is latest on 7-4-2022. These are the circulars. The latest sec uh, circular issued that is 12th Jan 2022 is uploaded in the website. Regarding the notif notifications issued with respect to registration of medical devices, uh, already, uh, Dr. Avikant sir has spoken about uh, GSR 648. You skip, you skip that. Oh, okay. Slide. Yes, sir. 
then JSR 102, JSR 19E. Now we'll go to the online system for medical devices, which is an online portal uh, identified by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for doing all the registration and uh, sub submitting the licenses, application for licenses for medical device and IVD. So this is the homepage for a medical device online portal. This is a link address given. So first the applicant has to register. That is create a login ID. You create a user ID and password. For that, the applicant has to register here. Click register here. Then it will go, uh, go to the next page wherein you will find the purpose of registration. So the applicant has to select the appropriate pur purpose. There is one more purpose for voluntary registration or compulsory registration process. Now, these are the list of uh, details which applicant has to first fill in to get a user ID and password. That is uh, uh, put the registered email ID, mobile number, and upload the following documents. ID proof details, undertaking, corporate office uh, address proof, copy of manufacturing license, if any, otherwise justification for the sale. The applicant has to verify the registration through OTP. There will be an OTP generated either sent to your mobile or your registered email ID. After self verification, applicant can log in and proceed further. So now, the, uh, go back, go back, Shami. Yes, this is a yes, very, sir. very simple procedure. I would like to apprise you, our all manufacturers, just you submit these documents, you will get your OTP. And before, you know, su uh, submission of your application, you have to take the password and login ID credentials. And then you can choose the voluntary and mandatory registration. There is no fees. You have to submit only the documents to get the registration uh, number. Next. Okay, sir. Uh, the same thing is replicated via screenshot here. This is the applicant registration uh, form where you can see the username, password, fields to be entered, name, mobile number, ID proof, undertaking, etc. Finally, you fill all the details. You submit the submit button. Click the submit button and it will take you to the OTP. Verification step two, wherein you will get the OTP. Once the OTP is verified, you will get the user ID and password. So with the user ID and password, you can start a logging and start registration or apply for license application. Now, this is how the dashboard looks like. Once you log into the online system for medical device, the dashboard for mandatory registration has a three uh, subsection. One is submit device detail, save as draft, for non-regulated device and submit non, non submitted non-regulatory devices. Now, for this to uh, submit a application, first you need to add address of manufacturing site for Indian address if it is a domestic manufacturer or overseas address for import. So it is shown in the second uh, subsection, and you can also refer to the industry guideline document published by CDAC. It's available in this particular website wherein you will get all the details how to do the uh, minor uh, changes, correction, the user profile, etc. Now, as per GSR 102E, uh, this is the timeline for the voluntary registration, mandatory registration, licensing regime, which is already explained by sir. Now, for the mandatory registration of uh, medical devices or IVD by a domestic manufacturer, these are the set of documents required for registration of medical devices. First of all, name and address of the company, firm, or any other entity manufacturing the medical device along with name and address of manufacturing site of medical device. Give the medical device details, generic name, model, intended use, class of the medical device, material of construction, dimension, shelf life, whether it is sterile or non-sterile, brand name, etc. Then certificate of compliance with respect to ISO 13485 standard accredited by NABCB or IAF in respect of such medical device. A fourth one, undertaking duly signed by the manufacturer stating that information furnished by the applicant is true and authentic. And this particular process has no fees involved. Now this is a section wherein it shows all the documents required for import of uh, a registration of import of medical devices, including IVD, wherein the importer has to uh, feed in the name of the company or the firm or any other entity importing the medical device, give the medical device details as explained earlier, certificate of compliance with respect to ISO 13485 standard accredited by NABCB IAF in respect of such medical devices, free sale certificates from country of origin, undertaking duly signed by the importer. 
and here also there is no registration fee involved once the product details are successfully registered the website will give you an auto generated registration number which is displayed in the screen for manufacturing domestic the uh, registration number will be first starting with your company name hyphen uh, dash district code dash state code slash m for manufacturing slash md for medical device instead of ivd it will uh, change as ivd slash six digit number numerical same way for registration number which is generated for importer it states first company name dash country code whether it is usa belgium there will be a short code slash i for import slash md for medical device it could be ivd for in vitro diagnostic medical device slash six digit number so, the so yes, these, uh, these uh, numbers these registration numbers these are to be uh, pasted on the label for track and trace system say for example if there is a quality issue how can we trace the you know manufacturing uh, unit or the manufacturer or the importer so if you see them in case of manufacturer the district the state code means gujarat g u j haryana h a r manufacturing means m for manufacturing ivd means i this import and then medical device and six digit number so that is for track and trace system next okay sir okay. now this is a dashboard for online system for mandatory registration so first of all the applicant has to start from the manufacturing address detail in, in case if it is a domestic manufacturer applicant need to enter manufacturing site address and save the details from under the menu button in case of importer the importer needs to enter actual manufacturing site details and save in the under the uh, menu option as uh, told earlier so once the addresses are saved under add overseas address and add indian address then the applicant can go to submit device tab under submit device tab once it is clicked add device detail will pop up now the selection purpose it will uh, show a drop down whether it is import or manufacturing and the category would be whether medical device or ivd so after selecting supposing if the manufacturer or importer has selected medical device category this is how the uh, screenshot showing all the device details like medical device grouping category the generic name class of the medical device etc there is also a drop down list you can see the notified category of medical device like pain management cardiovascular etc now in case of ivd if the applicant has selected ivd as a category then the list will show only analyzers ivd instruments and ivd softwares so once the device details are filled in you there will be a button save and continue so once it is saved and continued you will get a final number you can see in the screen one registration number has been generated with your device details below so once this is generated the application registration application automatically goes into the draft tab so under the draft device tab you can see there are five these are the dummy uh, file numbers created for your reference so this is how it will appear now under the action button there will be three drop down menus wherein in case if you want to edit you can edit the device detail or if it is fine then you can submit to cdsu once you click to submit to cdsu it will be registered with cdsu now in case if there is any technical glitch some problem related to the online application related technical problem software errors you can go to click here to report an issue at the it help desk under this tab you will find submit issue option a form wherein you can fill the uh, technical issue and submit to the it department and it will be resolved this is about the licensing regime for class a and class b medical devices now the licensing regime for class a class b medical device in ivd will start from 1 1st october 2022 the fees to be applied will be as per the second schedule of medical devices rule 2017 and the payment of fee has to be made through bharat kosh payment chalan okay now this uh, this particular table shows all the forms as per medical device uh, rule uh, all the input form 
for application for license to manufacture class A and class B output forms. If it is uh, applied in form MD3 uh, for application for manufacturing of uh, class A and B, the output you will get the license in form MD5. Similarly, it is, uh, they, it is written for loan license for license for manufacture of class C and class D. It will be form MD7 wherein you have to apply and you will get the output in form MD9. Output in this license. Now the oh, yes one, sir. One, yeah, Shamni. One more thing I want to tell uh, about manufacturers that you have very well shown this outcome. You know, like MD3 license has to be given in MD5. MD4 is the loan license for A and B, and license has to be given by in the MD6. Likewise, in MD8 for C and D, and loan license is issued in MD10. Let me clarify you that under the law, for grant of the loan license, there is no requirement of the audit. So, because the already uh, original licensee has already been licensed with all the details, if there is a change, then the audit can be carried out. Yes, sir. Next. Okay. And at the side, you can see the fees uh, prescribed for manufacturing site and individual distinct medical device, how much fees has to be paid as per second schedule. Now, these are the application forms and output form along with fee for a test license and import licenses and import test license. Now, at the end, uh, it, it is important. Can you excuse to, me? Can yes, you kindly sir? explain what is a test license and a loan license and an infection license, the difference between the three categories? All right. So MD3 means the actual manufacturer. Say, for example, I'm going to manufacture. I think there was a power outage, uh, uh, Dr. Sharma, I think uh, he's dropped out. Shamani, if you could kindly uh, answer that query. Uh, okay, While sir. The connect reconnects. Okay. So, uh, sir, form MD3 is uh, the application to be submitted by a manufacturer who has its own premise set up for manufacturing class A and class B medical devices, including IVDs. And the output, the form for the license is issued in form MD5 for this particular manufacturer. Now, the difference for with the loan licenses, in case if the particular manufacturer does not have its own premise to manufacture his own uh, design device, the loan licensee. Uh, so, just hold on. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm explaining, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So uh, the loan license, in the sense, uh, the manufacturer who does not have its own premise would like to seek uh, manufacturing his device another in the another premise of manufacturer who is already having license for similar product. So this is the concept of loan license. So there could be a technical agreement between both the parties. And this is the concept of loan license, wherein the form should be filled in MD4. The loan licensee has to fill in form MD4. And then the license is issued in form MD6. So is that clear? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. And with respect to the uh, test licenses, so there is there are two uh, forms. First form is form MD12, which is the uh, test license form for uh, clinical investigation test that is manufacturing small quantity of medical device or IVD for the purpose of clinical investigation, test or evaluation or examination, demonstration or training of medical device or IVD before going to uh, uh, before going to take the uh, actual uh, manufacturing or import license sorry manufacturing license for md12 applicant has to take form md12 apply in form md12 so that that uh, manufacturer can validate his products 
for checking the quality, safety, and efficacy. So once uh, the data is generated under form MD MD3 is issued. Uh, that is a license for uh, that's a test license for manufacturing small quantity of medical device for testing purpose or evaluation purpose. It could be even training or demonstration. And once the data is generated from this test license, the data can be used to upload in the form uh, MD3 or MD7 as mentioned here in the actual manufacturing license applications. Now, same way. Yes, Can I sir. ask a question here, Shamini ji? Uh, yes, sir. Suppose I'm already making the product for many years and now my product has come under the licensing system. Do yes, I sir. still need to apply for a test license or I will try, uh, apply straight away for a manufacturing license? Uh, sir, for uh, non-regulated uh, non -re uh, products, which is already in market, it is direct straight application for uh, manufacturing or import license, not the test license. Okay. But in if case I'm making the, yeah, straight away in, uh, registration yes. or straight away license, no test license required. No, no. Because you have to justify in the uh, suppose the checklist section of uh, performance evaluation, etc. Whatever is asked, clinical investigation, you can justify that this product is available in market from so many years some you know installation documents or some kind of proof may be uploaded that to prove that product was already in market already in export okay and if somebody by mistake has uh, instead of applying in the actual manufacturing license or in the actual registration he is uh, applied in the test license category sir, uh, to reapply I'm, so, I'm sorry sir uh, please hold on i'm getting a call sorry hello sir Uh, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Could you repeat your question? Yes. So my question on behalf of the manufacturers is: Suppose a manufacturer has, uh, by mistake, applied for test license. Now he comes to know that it was incorrect submission. Okay. He could have uh, gone directly for registration, or he could have gone directly for manufacturing license because he's okay. been making the product for a long time. Uh -huh. So will he make a fresh application and then uh, request CDSO to cancel his test license application? How does he do uh, that? Yeah, that applicant can anytime uh, withdraw the application. And apply fresh. Yeah, a fresh, uh, yeah, direct uh, uh, the application for manufacturer, application for import. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, Ravikan Sarma, sir, has some uh, problem with the internet connection. So he said he'll be joining soon. So uh, with this section, I will move hand over to uh, Mr. Sanjeev, which is uh, from CDEC division. Uh, Sanjeev? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, over to you, sir, reg regarding CDAC issues uh, or anything uh, related to CDAC portion uh, with respect to medical device online. Um, you already Yes, sir, we are not able to hear you properly. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev, we are not able to hear you properly. Hello? Yes, Shamni, ma'am. We can't Shall hear I give that live demo? Hello? Ah, yes, sir. That would Shall be I fine. Shall I give the live demo? Uh, yeah, yeah. If any, yes. based on the PPT, whatever Hello? is explained now, if uh, any of the uh, participant has any query, then uh, any you know real uh, live experience, if they they have faced any problem, it can be discussed with Sanjeev Kumar. Okay, if you Hello. can uh, uh, kindly. Uh, uh, remove your uh, screen sharing. Yeah. Sure. 
I would like to actually go on to the website and then uh, explain to you uh, how the manufacturers are a little bit challenged and the different kinds of uh, connects that we have to find. Okay, sir. Okay. So I will share my screen. Is my screen visible to everybody? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, so now there are two ways. So either I can go to CDSEO and search for CDSEO. So let's try that. So I go to Google and I search for CDSEO and I want to look at medical devices. I come to the screen over here and then I'm trying to find medical devices over here and okay, I can find medical devices over here. So I've reached uh, what you were trying to explain to me. Now, if I try another way, I go to CDSEO and medical devices. So I come over here, medical devices under CDSEO, and I come to this uh, website, which is also giving medical devices, and I'm getting the details over here. So this is slightly different than what uh, uh, we have seen as visible from the uh, CDSO main website, which is given the drugs and medical devices over here. And then I can try to seek over here the online application and the registration over here. And then if I so these are the two websites uh, entry points available for finding details about medical devices and the various notifications on the various forms over here. So if any manufacturer has got any query, you can put in the chat box or in the Q&A and then we can take it up. And anything which has been related so far by uh, Ms. Shamini, we can also take it up. So I'm going to stop my screen share and then uh, we can go back to Mr. Sanjeev uh, from CDAC. If his uh, audio is clear, he can now take over. Now I will present a live demo. Please go ahead. My screen is visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, ma'am. So this is the homepage of the CDSMD online portal. The very first step that already Shamni has uh, guided you, go to the login register and in this pop-up, click this register here button. There are various purposes for registration. So for manufacturing, volunteer, man uh, volunteer registration, compulsory registration, we will choose this last option and we'll submit. Then this page will come where we will find the we will, uh, fill the applicant details. Provide the necessary de details, starting from username. The username will be your login username.
So you have to provide these four documents: Aadhaar card, PAN card, passport, and then undertaking. the designation then organization name organization type sin number then address So after entering all the details in the registration page, submit those details. In this verification step, to you are recommended to use this email option. and then press generate otp on your mail id that you have given as a username you will get a OTP. You provide that OTP in the given text box, and then submit. User registration has been approved. So this is how you can register to the portal. Now you may log in to your account. Confirmation mail is also sent to you after registering.
maybe i'm entering the wrong password so i'm using this another screen so after registration when you will log into the portal this is your dashboard so first of all you have to uh, enter your addresses of your manufacturing units so for that you have to go to the menu which is at the uh, available at the left top menu then add address add indian address and in this you have to choose premises type manufacturing site address provide the organization name wo main baat karunga abhi usko aapne bola to nahi kuch address hmm to aapne bola नहीं आप बोल दीजिए नहीं आप कुछ बोल बोलिए मत सर बताएंगे ऑल दैट इज दैट यू हैव एंटर्ड विल अपीयर इन दिस लिस्ट and then you may go to the submit device tile here are two categories md and ivd choose the category you want to register address आ जाओ तो तीन मिनट रुक जाओ चूज द डिटेल्स व्हिच आर अवेलेबल इन द फील्ड्स दीस आर द फोर क्लासेस प्रोवाइड द डायमेंशन you can add the accessories component details also but these are not mandatory also you can enter the model for this device If you want to add more devices, then again go to the home page. Then again submit, and then again repeat the same process. So all your submitted devices are available here in save as draft tile. You can edit them before sending to CDSU. Once you will submit to CDSU, then you can no more edit that. So these are the option available for devices. You can edit, you can delete. If you don't find it proper to submit, or you can submit to CDSU. Now this is the only device which is pending at your side. You can submit it. All the three devices are now submitted to CDSU. so this is how you can submit your voluntary registration of medical devices in case you are finding any issue then you can click here click here to report an issue to help desk you can choose the category form name details of the issue 
you can attach any software document any other remarks and then submit all the submitted issue will appear in the right hand side track issues here you will find the answer of your problems which will be given by our technical team or whatever the guidance you may require so this is how you can go for uh, registering your uh, voluntary devices now over to ravi kan sir thank you sanjeev ji as a wonderful demonstration i think it will help to our manufacturers for filing the application for registration purpose that is most most important utmost priority now because after you know 3rd may uh, this this uh, this is mandatory and if you have any problem you please contact cdec uh, mr sanjeev singh he will definitely help you out and uh, now uh, from our side we have taken you through the cdsu website whatever the information for grouping for essential principle of checklist for notification for classification for circulars for notices there is a clear cut under the sub head of ibds and medical device division that is very much there the pictorial diagrams uh, the sanjeev singh has explained very well how to go about this registration purpose so now if there any question please uh, uh, go ahead and uh, floor is yours now and ask the questions uh, to to the concerned person sir i have a first question to mr sanjeev yes please go ahead uh, sir uh, in this non notified category when you submit a device it uh, he just explained that you cannot edit anything as per the recent circulation if people are getting iso certificate later on and in case they have given declaration how do they how do they upload their certificate from the declaration document that facility is currently missing from non notified category uh, uh, site sir me uh, you are mr dr sanjeev kumar you ah, please dr. before sanjeev. asking you introduce yourself that would be better to i'm, so, I'm sorry sir <laughs> yeah sanjeev ji you have any any option for because as of now the people the manufacturer the importer they are submitting an undertaking that we will obtain the iso 13 right sanjeev yes, ji yes sir now, now if they obtain the iso 13485 is there any option to upload we currently we are not having but we will provide the option to uh, so sanjeev ji you write this point this is a very very valid point you right, just sir. you just do uh, open a e vartalap system like in our applications sure sir so that they can upload the iso 13485 so i am writing you please note down this this uh, this one how to upload the iso 13485 right thank you thank you very much okay doc sir thank you so hum ek isme abhi cdex se coordination karke there will be a provision that is called as e vartalap in other applications there is a option so you can upload there that's wonderful sir yes question next question about so, shall i show the payment of uh, online you can have uh, mr patel uh, he has raised his hand he may kindly ask the question yes can you please uh, let harshal mr harshal patel uh, unmute himself sanjeev ji you have some more slides to show about the fees and all so sir i can give demo of making payment online okay you if if your uh, you know viewers or your manufacturers are uh, ready to listen about the how to upload the fees chalan so i think you please demonstrate to in two three slides that is very very important because in the questionnaire we have received uh, you know questions that they are not able to upload the chalan and all these things so sanjeev ji you please take take you through this uh, fee chalan so no, sir in the case of fee chalan in case of online payment uh, we are having in this menu online payment and in this you choose the option of making payment for, by clicking on make payment 
here we are having the list of forms against which you are going to pay the fee sanjeev ji i want to reiterate again the forms because for our uh, for the knowledge of our manufacturers right md1 is for notified body md7 for class c and class d manufacturing license md8 for loan license md12 is test license for manufacturing md16 is for import test license md24 clinical investigation of the new medical devices md24 is for clinical performance evaluation for new ibd md26 is for if the medical device is not available predicate device is not available md28 for ibd if the predicate ibd is not available md14 is for the import license md13 is for the registration of the laboratory in india to get tested the medical devices md13 is uh, it is not for your purpose pre sale certificate marketing is certificate these are for the tender documents okay go ahead sanjeev mm -hmm. so when you select the form name form md7 purpose only for manufacturing license to manufacture class c or class d medical device so this will automatically come let me provide the uh, device name uh, lik dijiye knee implant mm -hmm. name ha uh. कोई भी नाम लिखना है तो नी इम्प्लांट लीजिए के एन डबल के एन डबल इम्प्लांट यस आफ्टर फिलिंग दीज डिटेल दिस विल टेक यू टू भारत कोश पेमेंट गेटवे हेयर यू कैन मेक द पेमेंट so you can choose any option which suits you and then make the payment after making payment you can track your payment is what is the status of your is it confirm so currently i am i fill this for you 1500 is the status forward bharat ko takes 2 to 3 days to make the final payment uh, to give the channel charan so this is how you can uh, make the payment you will get the transaction number after making the payment and that will appear while filling your form so when you fill the form fill the details upload the documents and then go to the payment part in the payment screen itself automatically that transaction number will pop up in the select box and so there you have to choose the transaction number and then make the submission of your form so this is how the process goes on for making the payment uh, sanjeev ji this is dr sanjeev gupta again could you yes, could you and it is for uh, dr ravi khan ji also there are lot of uh, for a and b uh, medical devices payment people are not aware and uh, people are going then somehow when advise they are going to their uh, state government grass portals but the but the terminology used on those portals do not really match with the terminology which is used on uh, for class c and d payment uh, making so i would once again request that this may please also be harmonized for the benefit of those people who are working for class a and class b devices 
Uh, Mr. Sanjeev, uh, yes, sir. Uh, if if a manufacturer is applying for class A and class B, yes, sir. Where this fees goes? Sir, it goes to the state. I am talking about the terminal. No, 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 no. no I am talking Sanjeev Singh. Please. Uh, yes, sir. This Sanjeev. goes to state. So, in the form of Bharat Kosh? No, sir. So, so if, you can see in, in case of uh, online payment, when I'm making payment, we are uh, not having option here, MD3 and MD4 here. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, how they are paying the money now, right now? Sir, offline. Only offline mode is available for MD3 and MD4. So, can we take this question from our uh, respected state drug controller, Koshya ji, or, or Haryana drug controller, Taneja ji, if, if they can highlight on this issue? So in the current proposal, we have already uh, have scope for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So work is in progress. Yes, sir. Work is in progress. We had a meeting and uh, we have decided to make a harmonious process. Okay. So you note down this point once again. Yes, sir. That is on the most priority. Number one is the ISO 13485 uploading. And second is the how to pay the fee for class mm -hmm. A and class B. There oh, should yeah. be right. There should be no hassle for the manufacturers. Right, sir. So one okay. more point, sir. So one more point. Or in the meantime, in the meantime, see, there should be no supply disruption for the manufacturers. I'm very honest and very clear. But I want to hear from, from the Haryana Drug Controller Ji. Hey, Udar, Tane Jai Sahib, hey? Sir, he's on mute. Good afternoon, Dr. Sahib. Ah, good afternoon. How are you, good sir? Good afternoon, Dr. Sahib. नमस्कार जी नमस्कार जी नमस्कार नमस्कार तनेजा साहब ये क्लास ए क्लास बी के लिए उनका कोई इशू है मैन्युफैक्चरर्स का फीस के बारे में हां जी हां जी तो अभी आप कैसे चार्ज कर रहे हैं आप उनको ई ग्रास पे है ऑनलाइन है ऑनलाइन है वो किया है जब वो बिल्कुल ई ग्रास पे ऑनलाइन ही है वो आपको जो है मैंने भेजा है तिवारी जी को हमारा एक फ्लो चार्ट बनाकर मैंने कहा वो रन कर देंगे मिस्टर तिवारी को भेजा है नाथ साहब आपको भी भेजा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जो सबमिशन ऑफ फॉर्म्स है वो सीडीएसई ऑनलाइन जो है एमडी ऑनलाइन डॉट जीओवी डॉट इन पे जो है इन्होंने अपनी रजिस्ट्रेशन करानी है फर्म की जो भी नया अपना होता है और उसके बाद जो टू सबमिट फॉर्म्स ऑनलाइन यूजर लॉग इन टू अकाउंट एंड फ्रॉम द डैशबोर्ड सेलेक्ट सबमिट एप्लीकेशन एंड फॉलोज द फॉलोइंग प्रोसेस सेलेक्ट लाइसेंस टाइप मींस उसमें मैन्युफैक्चरिंग लाइसेंस उसने करना है yeah and then select md3 a ya 4 a on md3 a ya loan hai to md4 a after clicking submit button it provides general instruction to the applicant wo ek run kar denge to acha rahega mr tiwari kyunki mere paas aaj meri programmer nahi hai yahan no no problem uh, uh, we have given this uh, uh, to ms aditi and uh, when your session comes that time we can explain it again no problem theek hai theek hai theek hai अभी टाइम लगेगा क्या नेक्स्ट आप ही ने आना आफ्टर लेट गो सी डी एस फिनिश एंड देन वी कैन कम अबाउट यू जी जी वन मोर पॉइंट टू रेस हमारा ई ग्रास पे है जो आपका क्वेश्चन है वो मैं आंसर कर देता हूं ऑनलाइन है बिल्कुल ट्रेजरी से जुड़ा हुआ है और उससे आपने करके और उस पे डाल देनी है देयर इज नो ऑफलाइन सबमिशन ऑफ द पी राइट राइट सो एनी फर्दर क्वेश्चन और यू वांट टू टेक कमेंट फ्रॉम कोशिश साहब आल्सो राजीव जी can we say hi to him uh, mr kosha is not there uh, his uh, representative is there uh, we'll come to him uh, definitely okay so now the the, the time is for question answer we should not waste time if hello yeah if cdso has finished uh, we can then move on to the uh, to the next part of the program uh sure so there's just one question i think by dr pawan if we can quickly take that uh, if that's okay so sure. your so hmm. the question answer is part is over from cds side what should i uh, so just understand? stay on for a moment we have one question pawan if you could ask your question yes please yes i'm dr pawan uh, mehrotra hello this is this is for cds co Yes, Pavanji, go ahead. Anji, so there is one body uh, which is British Standards Institute. Okay, yeah. Now there is an ambiguity. The mm -hmm. ambiguity is that it is 
notified to be a correct body as per CDSCO's um, notice dated 31st July 2019, where mm -hmm. it has where it comes under the list of notified bodies. And in that circular, there were only six. But now, if you look at the NABCB's circular, in there, BSI is not a part of the 14 bodies which have been certified. However, BSI has been certified by IAF. Now, please, could you throw light on this ambiguity, please? In case of BSI, they have withdrawn from the notified bodies. And I think in the hard copy, we have accepted that one. Okay. Okay. So on the online, there is no uh, procedure that the license can be withdrawn and all, but they have intimated to us. So is it that now BSI would not be uh, considered as a valid body by CDSCO? Yes, yes. Though they have withdrawn, then, then it is not a notified, valid, so, registered. So all manufacturers who have a BSI will need to opt for a new certification body, is it? Yes, yeah, yes, because Thanks. as per the medical device rules, the notified bodies have to be accredited first by NABCB. If yes. there is a question, because, uh, because the representative from NABCB is also, also there in our panel, you can raise the question to them also. Actually, the problem can now I, here, the problem I, here now for manufacturers uh, is... Yes, uh, yes, yes, Anil sir, please. Uh, uh, let me clarify okay. because hmm. some confusion is being uh, created. Uh, we should be very clear about three things. Number one, there is a concept of notified bodies by CDSCO, and CDSCO has a list of notified bodies which are entitled to do audit of class A and B device manufacturers. Correct? Number two, there is NABCB which accredits certification bodies for ISO 13485. You can go to NABCB website and look at the list of certification bodies. Now for a business reason, a certification body which is accredited by NABCB may not come to CDSU for notification. Please note that also. So CDSU list may have 13, NABCB may have 15 because some people choose not to go to, to be a notified body. Please remember that. So CDSU list is applicable when it comes to an audit, when you are going for licensing, not for ISO 13485 certificate. For ISO 13485 certificate, the MDR says either from a certification body accredited by NABCB or accredited by IAF for the purpose of registration. So today BSI, which is accredited, I know, which is accredited by ANAP or somebody else, a certificate would still be valid 13485 certificate, but it is not a notified body and it is also not accredited by NABCB for ISO 13485 now. So I think these three things should be made, keep, keep kept very clear. The concept of notified bodies for audit, for licensing purposes for class A and B. The concept of having a 13485 certificate from either NABCB accredited body or an IAF accredited body. So today, even an IEF accredited body is acceptable to CDSU as per the rules. And therefore, BSI, which may be accredited by a foreign accreditation body, is still accepted. In my presentation, I'll show you a certificate of a foreign accreditation body so that you understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johari. Um, I will request that uh, we can continue with the program and I will yeah. request uh, the CDSO representatives may kindly either stay on or rejoin because there will be more questions uh, uh, which may be coming forward. So uh, we'll be having a Q&A &A session after the main speakers have uh, put forward the presentations because uh, most of the queries we are trying to cover by presentations on a proactive basis. And if uh, still there are outstanding issues, they can be covered in the Q&A session. Rajiv ji, it would be appropriate because this, this is regarding the regulation. We have finished the CDEC, we have finished the website, we have finished the regulation. My request is that you please come to the question answer so that within 10 minutes we can finish. So that there will be delink. Okay, uh, if, you, if you wish it like that, what we will do yes. is that we will, uh, in that case, uh, uh, go straight uh, to Ramaji. If you can uh, start with the Q&A, okay. uh, we will request uh, 
both uh, Mr. Taneja and uh, uh, Mr. Koshya's uh, representative who's joined us now onto the session okay. along with CDSA to answer the uh, various queries which are coming forthcoming. And uh, after that, we will uh, go back to the experts because uh, there are issues regarding classification, regarding certification, uh, which we still have need to address uh, and for which uh, the manufacturers need to be guided on that. But we'll come back to that separately. We're going with the FAQ session. One. So we have Mr. Yogesh uh, uh, Darji, uh, if he can be uh, moved from the attendees to the panelists. He's joined in from Gujarat, uh, Aditi, and he can be uh, made no, part I'm, of the panel. Today. I'm getting it done. Uh, Rishabh, uh, from the participants, can you please give a speaker right to Mr. Yogesh Darji? In the participants, Actually, yeah. you can oh, see. Yeah. yeah, please do that. Just give him speaking rights. Thank you. Mr. Darji is the Assistant Commissioner, uh, FTCA, Gujarat. Okay. Okay. Raman, would you like me to yeah. present the FAQ? One second. Okay. Yes. okay. Hello. Hello. Good. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Darji, Darji, you have joined. Uh, you are audible. Yes. Uh, please be on standby. Uh, Sure. We are now starting a FAQ session, uh, so we will be seeking your response on behalf of the Gujarat government uh, okay. from the regulator side. Once I thank you I mean, for the such organize a good uh, program for the medical US manufacturer and such clarification. Kusha sir is busy with uh, me uh, meeting with the uh, health minister, so he cannot come. Okay. That's okay. Uh, thank you for joining in and for supporting us. Uh, we appreciate your coming in at a very short notice because Mr. Koshia's exigencies, uh, of course, they take a precedence. Over to you, Ramaji. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rajiji. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. You're audible. Just quickly uh, run through the set of questions that we have received from the industry, uh, just about uh, 13, 14 questions. Uh, it was the regulators um, to answer this. Uh, the first question is from Cody Medical Electronics. Uh, we have already registered our non-notified manufacturing and uh, import products in the online portal of CDSEO on voluntary basis. Now we want to get the manufacturing and import license for our non-notified medical device. Please guide us in which portal we have to apply for the license. So any guidance documents will be helpful. And Dr. Abhikant Sharmaji, I think uh, you are the best person for this. Yeah, this we have already explained no, in our yes. MD online. This portal yes. is established. We have already explained how to go about the licensing. You have to select your medical devices, pay the fee, upload the documents as per the checklist. Right. And you can get the... So, so this is for the category which is under registration. So post-registration, if somebody wants to move from registration to licensing. Licensing. Yes. Then at what period of time and how does he apply for the license? Is the uh, licensing already open same. or he has to wait for it? Yes. My my suggestion here to all, all uh, you know, manufacturers, they should prepare the documents and they should upload the documents because what will happen if this is a class B medical device, it has to be audited by the notified body and it will take time. So... <coughs> All the manufacturer, they should collect the data and they should upload and they should file their applications. In the meantime, the notified body will audit, they will give the report and the licensing will be start from 1st October so that our application can be prepared in all respect. So as of now, uh, all the people who've registered are now free to seek licensing, but the license will be applicable uh, to them only on 1st October after they have been audited by the notified body and the state regulator awaits their documentation, right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a very important move, so that brings a lot of clarity. Thank you. The second question is from Perfin to Ahilke. So we have managed to upload all the files. Uh, we have attached the files with some issues. Um, there still there are some issues in the system. We reached the state uh, regulator 
uh, I mean, state portal to make the payment for the state CDSCO, and there is no payment related information. We tried contacting the drug controller office in Chennai, but they are not aware of such a payment process. Uh, so then uh, we were in the meeting conducted by CDSCO regarding this uh, registration requirements uh, held in the month of Jan 2022. Uh, this is an issue which needs uh, clarification. This, this is, is with reference to the state licensing authorities where uh, the industry member is saying uh, they don't have this uh, payment uh, option in the website. No or instructions related to payment uh, related information. So this is a class of A, B, or C or D. We don't. Yeah, these are all class A and B products. Basically, these are all okay. the sections predominantly so, for class A and B. Ah. All right. So they have to go to. They have to approach to the state drug controller. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, Sanjeev is. What is the problem? Why they are not uh, not able to make the payment? Is there an issue in the sugam? There is no payment related information in the state. Uh, the portal is what they are saying. State CDSO. State CDSU is not there, madam. State is looked after the state licensing authority. Right. So, state are, so that's what I'm telling you. They should approach through the state drug controller. Mm. They can help him whether they want to, you know, take the chalan or something like that in hard copy and they can upload. But we are receiving so many applications from Chennai, from okay. the state, state mm. of the Tamil Nadu, and there is no problem. Okay. Uh, Thank I, this is Dr. Sanjeev Gupta. I think uh, for this, uh, anybody who wants to submit the payment for A and B, they have to select their state grass payment system to make these payments. Yes. And a few minutes ago, uh, Ravi Kanji said they are already working on it so that it gets resolved on the CDSO portal itself. That is going to be a very big thing eventually. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. So the next question, this next one is from uh, previous uh, Dentro. Uh, so they are the manufacturer of dental materials, which are classified as medical devices, and um, they have voluntary, uh, voluntarily registered uh, their products uh, under Class A and B category, and they've got their uh, reg voluntary registration number. So they want to apply for the manufacturing license for the products currently manufactured by them. The list of dental devices uh, as notified by CDSEO covers only 10 of the products manufactured by them. Rest of the products are not notified by CDSEO. Without notification of these products, we are unable to apply for the test license and without uh, obtaining test license, we cannot apply for manufacturing license. So we see, have returned to... See, uh, yes, I re we received this application and there are more than 150 products. Uh, it takes time to examine. Fine. But having said that, because whatever the 26 categories, what we have classified, mm. these are dynamic in nature. Mm. These are not final lists. Mm. The products may be incorporated in future, mm. but the manufacturer, they can take a view of what is the classification in Europe? Mm. What is the classification in Canada? what is the classification in japan and at the minimum risk like b they can apply mm. test license doesn't mean doesn't mean i mean if you are putting class b or class c whenever you are coming for licensing then it play a very important role mm. so you apply for test license and we will clarify this application is under examination we have asked the applicant to submit in tabular form what are the classification in other countries mm. So, so as per the, you, you make a quality data and whatever the classification is outside, you can file your application. Right. So this is allowed based on the classification in other countries, they can still file an application. Yes, we, we can upload in our, you know, on our website. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And uh, yeah, this is their, they're more uh, concerned about their manufacturing license, how to apply. Maybe you have clarified it, sir. So then uh, maybe we can ask the industry to work on it accordingly. The next one is from several medical uh, medi equipments. Uh, some of the challenges uh, they're facing is with reference to obtaining ISO 13485 uh, within the stipulated uh, time frame due to COVID-19 and uh, the lot of issues that they have a phase like a shortage of manpower and labor turnout, additional market demand, stock, uh, 
stock out of uh, key raw materials, components in the market, abnormal price rises, etc. They are struggling to meet uh, the customer requirements. Most of the time, uh, uh, the time has been spent in battling out uh, the, uh, these issues. So to understand and prepare the technical documents and to meet the regulatory requirements, it's taking a lot of time due to which we may not be able to complete uh, this ISO 13485 certification process within the stipulated uh, date. Clarifications on regulatory requirements uh, itself is consuming a lot of time and we are not able to get proper guidance from our uh, available sources. Due to this reason, we were uh, not able to standardize the process and documentation requirements uh, of ISO 13485 certification. The, this is the request so, from uh, industry, sir. So, uh, Ramaji and Mr. Rajiv and all my audience, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has issued the notification way back in 1st of February 2020. The adequate transition time has been given. I want to ask that question that without process and documentation and standardizing the process, they are marketing the products in the, in the country. It is certainly not acceptable. That is the reason why first voluntary and mandatory registration is applied. We are not asking any document. Sim we are not asking any fees. Government is not charging any fees. But, but who is who? Who is manufacturing what medical devices? That should come in the loop. You should come forward. So, I mean, I mean, after 30, 1st of May, you will say, oh, no, sir, we, we need more 10 months. So that is the ongoing process. That is up to the government, whether they accept or not. But as, as of now, we have to obtain the ISO 13485 before 31st of May. Right. Thank you. The next question is from Uma Surgicals. Um, this is regarding the, some payment issues. We paid the fee for uh, a free sale certificate online, but Chelan could not be generated by the system for three months. We brought this point to your notice and you directed us to the respective authorities. However, the issue was never solved uh, even after following up with various authorities of CDSCO, Sukum Portal, CDAC. We did follow up for almost four months. All the time query was uh, about uh, free sale certificate Shala not being uploaded. Our overseas customers could not believe our explanation and we were almost about to lose our customers. We paid the amount for second time and we're fortunate that Chelan could be generated and we got free sale certificate. Our first amount remains unutilized uh, with the regulator's uh, office. So this is not a pleasant experience. This yeah. is a feedback from the industry, sir. So this is, uh, this is not correct. This is not correct. It should not happen. Hmm. Our manufacturer should not suffer for the free sale certificate because free sale certificate is used to export the product outside. Point number one. Point number two, let me apprise you that as per the rule for class A and class B, the free sale certificate is issued by the state licensing authority. And for class C and class D, the free sale certificate is issued by the CDSC. I want to understand for which state there is a problem, whether this is a problem with, with CDSCO. And you please immediately ask him to write a mail to uh, Sanjeev Singh in CDEC. The problem should be immediately solved. Right. And if it is stuck with the state, they should approach the state licensing authority. What is the problem? If it is not, you know, you know, accepting the you know, fees, they should apply in the, they should give the chalan or treasury chalan or in the hard copy, but it should not be stopped. I mean, our manufacturer should not suffer. So this was a class uh, C device and it was with CDSC, not with the state licensing authority. And uh, so uh, ask him to give the, uh, you know, application number to me immediately. Yes. And tomorrow only, tomorrow onward, uh, this, on Monday, this problem will be sorted out. Thank, Thank you, sir. you. Thank See, you so much, sir. What is, what is happening, Ramaji? We are deputing our two assistant drug controller level person on Monday and Wednesday. Half day they are deputing to solve the problem. Shamni and Ajay Basil, is, they are both are here. And our, our CDEC person is also here. Right. Why this problem is not brought to our notice? 
and i want to i want to you know see where it is is the cup right sir we have written to you and we written to mr helwale uh, and to no no uh, abhi 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 ab do one thing the ask the company person to write a mail to me and to see that sanjeev ji mr sanjeev singh i think he hello mr sanjeev ha sir ji main hu संजीव जी ये जो इशू है जरा देखिए किसका कहां पर अटका हुआ है एंड वाई इट इज स्टक अप सो यू यू वांट द एप्लीकेशन नंबर हाँ सर एप्लीकेशन नंबर बताएं और क्या इशू है बता दें और क्या इशू है वो हम देख के अभी इसको इसको सॉर्टेड आउट करते हैं ठीक है ठीक है सर राइट थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर दॉन्स वी रियली अप्रीशियट द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम प्रीमियम हेल्थ केयर डिस्पोजेबल they need support uh, from uh, your office proper training and consultancy from cdseo regarding preparing documents practically and not through video tutorials as same as during gst implementation camps were held identifying knowledgeable consultant a certification body identification was a good one uh, maybe there are challenges in identifying knowledgeable consultants extension of time for those who have already proceeded subsidy and fixed price of certification body consultancy uh, fee for industry to support msme audit fee to be reduced we are building health infrastructure system of our country and each and every manufacturer is bound by law we need proper tools and time to build health infrastructure during corona lots of precious time was wasted and we were not able to uh, do many things yeah that is a general question but as far as manufacturers are concerned they should be aware that what is the device master file and what is the plant master file right yes and if they are not aware they should go to the concerned state licensing authority our eminent and knowledgeable state drug controllers under there are assistant drug controllers there are medical device officers notified they can guide you have a meeting with them which if there is a you know problem in the in the uh, documentation then definitely they will sort it out for class c and class d you can approach our journal office definitely they will help you so that is a given and taken you have to come you know you have to come forward for learning take the help from other partners other colleagues who are licensed and for class a there are no much you know documentation is required because these are the list class class b you need more documentation and definitely this problem is not so big it will be sorted out yeah. so the challenge is that uh, this manufacturer is located in in asansol in uh, west bengal there are very few manufacturers for medical devices hardly uh, 10 to 15 enlisted with i med in west bengal area and most of them are in the calcutta area uh, there are no real consultants listed with imed in the whole of west bengal area so they need to communicate with consultants in delhi area and this becomes a challenge for a small company in covid times to communicate only on vcos and on uh, telephone discussions uh, so uh, this is where there was being a challenge and also they were uh, trying to reach out through the health secretary of trying to get support from their local department but the challenge is that even the state drug controller and their staff in uh, west bengal since of such few manufacturing units uh, they don't have too much experience about medical device manufacturing and its difference from a, a drug department or drug products and that's being a challenge for the manufacturers over there i have seen that similar problem also in other states where manufacturing is quite minimal and uh, many of the state regulators themselves are not having clarity about this medical device regulations and uh, i think uh, uh, i would appreciate either uh, we have of course invited them today's uh, event of course but i think uh, regulator to regulator i know you have been working with the various state regulators but i think cdso if you could also have an independent uh, webinar only for regulators at yes. state level yeah rajiv very useful at yeah we have, them. we have planned that in coming you know weeks we will organize and we will convene a meeting of the state drug controller but in spite of that you also initiate the, as today you have called the two eminent our drugs controllers in the future you can also call them we will also try to call them in the state drug controller uh, controllers meeting 
and in your panelist i think dr sanjeev gupta is well versed about the documentation he can have a vc with them and he can guide them okay this is the plant master file and device master file you depute one or two person for this uh, because that is the duty of manufacturer as association when we are we are educating you 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 know then you, it should percolate to your members somehow in the written in the writing you can send some notes to them you take the today notes and forward to them if they they visit us definitely we will guide them that is the you know that how we we can we can do because this is a transition stage next question please yeah next question is from medihub uh, uh, science tech um, they are a manufacturer of cardio pulmonary bypass disposable medical devices they have voluntarily registered uh, their products in the portal and they have uh, you know, obtained the registration number Uh, one of the products registered is named uh, hemo concentrator manufactured for uh, more than uh, decades used in some extra corporeal circuit to concentrate the blood during uh, cardiac surgery maybe that's a procedure but there are similar devices listed under the category nephrology and renal care which is not under our scope of iso certification Uh, hence request you to advise us to how to apply for manufacturing license for this product so if they have got registration madam yes and they can market the product no ah. problem and now they have to apply in the in the portal for the licensing if they need any clarification about the class yes because in our class no they should see what is the material of construction what is the intended use you yes. cannot classify each and every device but if it is resembling with those devices the similar indication they right. can choose that class or uh, if in in say for example in europe it is a 2a hmm. then you can file as per the class b hmm. if it's 2b there then you can file as it class c later on we will correct it hmm. we have we, when we will examine the this one application hmm. we will ask them okay you correct is b or c or whatever right maybe there are other thing is because their product comes under cardiovascular and uh, but the ones which are listed are under nephrology and renal care uh, they have a confusion yes it and, uh, it should not be at all confusion mm -hmm. you just ask them what is the you know class in the europe or in the in the us or in in right. canada right sir. there will be so there be maybe mistake in our even list also mm -hmm. but you have to see whether indication is similar almost similar then this particular proposed device will fall under the same category mm -hmm. because i think they have obtained their iso certification and the scope of uh, the certification um, is also there is um, an issue maybe we have to ask the industry to represent uh, yes yes at your office ramaji we will just take a pause over here uh, in the yes. faq we will just invite mr tanaja because he has to go for a, a flight oh all right if you can right, right, uh, if you can yes. come in now and uh, make a quick presentation yes about uh, chalans and uh, the payment system uh, what normally manufacturers have to go through uh, online or offline and after that we will come back to this faq and continue with the other yes. presentations also uh, maybe aditi mr tanaja are you still there if you can join in you can introduce uh, mr tanaja and uh, I think I don't see Mr. Kanija in the. Maybe he's left. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's not there. Yeah, he's not there. So we may no. continue in that case. Okay. Just a second. Yeah. Able to share. Just a second. Can you see the screen? Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's it's visible. Yeah. I think it was number seven. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Question number seven, and uh, so this is about others. Uh, we have explained. Then we have uh, from Safe Pharma. 
uh, we are an MSME manufacturer of disposable surgical products, and we have not yet obtained ISO 13485 from NABCB notified body. The reason is products clarity on the classification and coverage of disposable surgical wares under MDR 17, and there are financial barriers such as cost for various changes uh, to obtain the certification. And also we would like to know if there are any subsidies or schemes available for MSME firms to overcome this uh, financial barriers. Uh, expected uh, is another six to nine months are expected to achieve this certification. Now this is uh, uh, the problem of an MSME manufacturer, sir. So financial aspect, we are not concerned about that. That is not yes. our, uh, our uh, yes. domain. But definitely, I would like to say that shoe covers, aprons, OT gowns, I think we have classified in our, in our list, classification list. If it is not there, they can, they can file the application as per the international norms. Right. We will update, we will update you know, in coming times. Sure. Right. Thank you. Uh, Rama, Rama, just a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, in relation to the subsidy schemes, uh, I would suggest that they look at whichever state they are in. Many states have in their industrial policy subsidies for MSME, for ISO certifications. For example, I know certainly UP has, Tamil Nadu has. So they should look at their state uh, industrial policy and there might be a subsidy. Thank you. You're right, sir. Actually, state to state, um, state governments are uh, extending for many ISO standards. This particular MSME is in Lucknow, I think, or Kanpur. Uh, They're in UP, then, so they can apply then, there. Then in that case, UP certainly has, I have the notification with me. I can share with you, Mr. Rajiv Nath, and you can share with me. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, next is from Carol Biotech. Uh, several of us dealing with SLA, CDSCO is well organized uh, to answer the queries raised on medical devices. However, the SLA situation is very different. Our associations interaction and uh, other such forums have been mainly with CDSCO and almost uh, nothing is happening with SLAs. Whereas class A and B, CDSCO is uh, not in the picture. So it would be of great help for class A and B manufacturers if IMED can organize more and uh, more interactive sessions with uh, SLAs. Uh, this is a regular uh, issue which has been highlighted and escalated in many forums. More interactions with the SLAs is what uh, been uh, requested for. We have invited um, all the state drug controllers and their representatives in fact in uh, today's webinar. If not as speakers, they could uh, still join in as delegates. Uh, to understand the issues and then to work jointly with us for address, addressing these issues over there right. and also for spreading the word for, uh, like for a fact i know that uh, certain drug controllers were kind enough uh, to make sure that manufacturers in the state who were struggling for their license or registration would be part of this webinar they had asked their inspectors to spread the word on our uh, whatsapp messages we will also be having the meetings of state drug controller in future and uh, for interaction. Thank you, sir. The next question is from uh, Swiss Neobio and uh, they are manufacturer of class uh, D medical devices and uh, they do have their ISO certification, ISO 13485 certificate from NABCB accredited certification body. So do they have to uh, submit their ISO certification to CDSCO is the question. Yeah, they can submit. I think if it is a class D, I believe that they have taken the license. Yes. And as per the schedule five, the license has been given to them. Mm -hmm. I think they are manufacturing some cochlear implants, I think. Okay. So they, they can upload in the e of this ISO 13485. That is, that is most important. Right. So if they're making additional class D products, which have currently not been uh, in the 37 category of licenses coming under the registration process, yeah. Uh, how do they go around doing that? If they this is not notified, this is not notified, they have to take the registration number, point number one, mm -hmm. right? And they have to apply for the, if it is in class C, they can mark it up to 1st uh, October 2023. Uh, class C and class D. Yes, so, it's a class D product, sir. Yeah, that, that, is, that is clearly defined in the law. Right. That's what the transition time has been given. 
for class C and class D because these are the highly risk class. Yes. That's why the 18 months was for this one uh, for uh, voluntary registration and 24 months mandatory registration. Means 42 month, months you have got to come under the licensing regime. Right. Thank you, sir. Next question is from Kanan Latex. Uh, we have a CDSMO registration but there are many who are trading and manufacturing and supplying medical devices without CDSEO registration. Basically, hospitals are not aware or they do not uh, bother as uh, what they need is only a price. Only when hospitals ask for CDSEO registration details, the suppliers will wake up. This is uh, a very valid statement because the user industries uh, uh, awareness and knowledge on uh, regulatory requirements of product companies. Uh, the awareness is very limited and they are not aware and uh, users also should be uh, given more awareness on all these things. No, this is a valid question. Yes. That's why that is the objective of this workshop. Those who have not taken the registration certificate, please come forward. Otherwise, what will happen? The condition is that after 31st May, means 1st June, there will be a problem. And on the risk base, there will be enforcement. If our drug inspector goes there and they, without uh, you know registration certificate, this product is in the market, then that, that is a violation of the law. Absolutely. My appeal to all the manufacturers, please obtain the registration number so that it will help you to market the product in various hospitals. That is our duty. Hospitals are not bothered. Hospitals, yes, they are procuring. Yes, few hospitals, they are aware, okay, license is required, but they are not aware about the registration part. Absolutely. And you see, when we are issuing the registration, it, it means whether this uh, manufacturer is complying with the all standards. We really don't know. That is sort of a transition time. Okay, you get it testy, tested as per the BIS standard in various laboratories make sure that your product is uh, complying with all the requirements. That is the purpose. I mean, this is the time to come out, to wake, get it, apply for test license. Immediately within three days, we will give you a license, uh, MD12 or MD, MD16. Manufacture the product, get it tested some NABL laboratories. Get some CDSU registered laboratories. You ensure that your product is uh, complying the BIC standards. And madam, survival for the fittest, I mean, you have to, you have to survive. You have to compete. Otherwise, you, you will be far behind. A few, few of educational sessions, even for user industry, hospitals, diagnostic centers, the users of these equipments is also needed, sir. Yes. Because they are also asking that, you know, that uh, they would like to know because they need to uh, do a proper vendor evaluation. Yeah. So, so I think to... to accelerate the process, uh, what Kanam is basically trying to seek is uh, possibly if CDSC or Ministry of Health can inform Jim. So if they make a registration as part of the procurement process, then the yes. manufacturers who've come forward and who've got themselves registered or licensed, on a voluntary basis, uh, they get the advantage for coming as front runners. Is basically what Kanam is trying to seek over here. Yes, yeah, so actually, Mr. Fetch can kindly do that. It'll uh, help the people who've come forward, and the people who've come forward will have a edge over the people who are struggling behind. Actually, uh, Mr. Rajiv, procurement uh, is dealt by the DPIT and DOP. I, I think they are taking up this matter very seriously. On the jam, I think they will give the directions. Okay, when there is a registration number of uh, this manufacturer is there, then only you allow. I think they are taking this matter. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Magnetic. Uh, we are looking for ISO 13485 from an NABCB accredited certification body and CDSEO. Please suggest as uh, someone, as others are charging very high charges. So I think ISO 13485, uh, I think Mr. Johari will answer this question. 
Yes. Well, all I can say is that please uh, go to the NABCB website, look at the list of certification bodies, contact all of them and find out who serves you the cheapest uh, certificate. And, uh, I mean, you also have an option of going for any certification body in the market, just checking up, be sure you check up, they are accredited by a accreditation body, which is member of IAF and uh, talk to them. I mean, just yesterday, somebody sent me a certificate saying, it cost 18,000 rupees. It was a proper certificate. Now, I don't know how it cost 18,000 rupees, but it is a proper certificate as far as I can see. But Jori ji, this is a valid, very valid question. 18,000, you have a question. If somebody wants 80 lakhs, then you have a question. Why, well, why NABCB NAB has not fixed up about the product wise, criticality wise, class wise, our manufacturers, you know, they, they, we have to protect. In uh, our Dr. Sharma, and, Dr. Sir, Sharma, sir, sir, let me complete. Dr. Dr. In Sharma. our, let me let me complete. Give me two yeah, minutes. Sure. In our medical device laboratories, whatever the notified bodies we have registered, Rajiv ji, you you just listen carefully. We worked out as per the mandates. Twenty thousand rupees per mandates or product wise. If somebody is notified is asking more money. The manufacturer should inform to us. There should be some, you know, restrictions. 18,000, you are having a question. 80 lakhs, if somebody is asking, then we don't have a question. That is not a, uh, we are, it is not acceptable. Yes, Mr. Jori, go ahead, please. Uh, as, a, as a matter of principle, accreditation bodies do not get into what fee is being charged by certification bodies to their clients. And they have no power to, there's no provision in the system, neither in the standard which applies to accreditation bodies, nor in any other uh, provision where we can, as an accreditation body, restrict or cap the fee. Unfortunately, that is how the market is. No, create so a provision. We can't deviate from provisions since we are signatory to international mutual recognition <laughs> arrangements where there's a policy of no more, no less, which means we cannot deviate from what is the ISO standard applicable to us. We cannot add requirements or reduce requirements. So there is a problem that since we, otherwise our signatory status will be in, you know, can be questioned that we are adding or we are making more requirements. So that is a, that is an issue. But is uh, certainly NABCB can be requested to have a meeting with medical device uh, uh, CBs and talk about this issue and come around to some kind of, you know, uh, understanding that uh, the, the charges are reasonable. That certainly can be attempted. But let uh, me come in. Let me give you the market realities currently. The market realities for authenticated accredited certification bodies in India uh, typically can vary from something like 20,000 rupees to 50,000 rupees per man day for a manufacturer. How many mandates a manufacturer audit he has to face offline and on site depends whether he makes a class A product, class B product, class C product, or class D product. How many employees he has got, whether it's 10 or 50 employees, or whether it is 500 employees, or whether it is 1,000 employees, or 1,500 employees in a manufacturing site. How many manufacturing sites he's got, because each one requires it as an independent and separate audit. So in each site, if he's making multiple products and whether they are all A or B category or some are C and D category, then the highest will be applicable over there. So typically I would say for a manufacturing site, for a small company of less than 500 people, it can be typically around two days, minimal on-site audit and off-site maybe at least half a day to review the documentation and the paperwork. It can be a full day also. Uh, based on say three days over there, at least 60,000 rupees to 150,000 rupees will be charged for certification by a good certification body. This is the Indian scenario, which is still much more economical than the international scenario. The international scenario currently is more shocking. For the European MDR, if somebody has to go for the certification, they are not doing any bridge audit. So if my company has got MD SAP certification. My company has got European MDD C certification. It has got uh, ISO 13485. It has got ICMED certification. 
it is not taken into consideration at all a fresh clean audit is going to be done for the european mdr regulatory approval going forward and the fees which are being charged for that is not being less than 2000 euros per man day minimal what i've seen so far and in the case of technical file review it is going up to 4000 euros per man day so and even at that fee there are not enough auditors available not enough notified bodies available it is a sellers market they are putting these high fees to discourage applicants because there are not enough notified bodies who are available in europe that's so why is, the regulation collapsed there rajiv ji i won't say it has collapsed over there but uh, yes they've gone from a uh, slightly i would say uh, lenient regulation to now very overly tough regulation but uh you may have your own views on that but what we have seen is that it is the most logical regulatory system and uh, the most pragmatic one uh, so far no but no. yes currently what they've created is something which is being uh, extremely tough and being a huge challenge uh, for their existing manufacturers no and they are trying to maintain the uh, accreditation over there Rajiv but that is the reality and uh, it is uh, cost going to be costing uh, a good size company anything from 40 lakh rupees or 60 lakh rupees just for technical file review earlier you could do audit first certification first technical file review was later on rajesh ji we should not review first no, and then certification should, later should, on no no we should not go in the nitty gritty of the europe and we have to think about the india in perspective of indian manufacturer point number 1 as yes that's why we did sir isometric certification as as jori so more bodies just available and more auditors available अरे भाई राजीव जी मुझे बोलने दीजिए एक मिनट एज जोरी जी हैज मेंशन देर इज ए स्कोप फॉर डिस्कशन ऑन दैट इशू दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन आई एम टेलिंग यू आवर मैन्युफैक्चर आर फेसिंग लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम आवर नोटिफाइड बॉडी दे आर चार्जिंग फॉर सपोज कीजिए 1.20 लाख फॉर ए मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट एंड फॉर आईएसओ 13485 दे आर चार्जिंग 5 लाख दिस इज द डिस्पैरिटी सेम नोटिफाइड बॉडी it is a very very valid question when a regulator can call the notified body and the manufacturer and they fix it is not in the law but we make out a guideline rajiv ji that's why for iso 1345 there should be a guideline yes for the small manufacturer to give the iso 1345 certificate the 50000 or 1 lakh would be the, uh, for, for uh, you know two products or three products or the product those members or the employees they have less than 20 i mean there is a scope of discussion this is a very very valid it should be it should have been addressed and that is the duty of the imed that so is the responsibility so this is coming under the area of nabcb when they are giving accreditation they are giving accreditation and certification based on the structure only so you take the matter with the nabcb we have discussed already with them we have discussed already with them and they have explained to us the structure okay so that structure has been explained to us so now we are understanding the logic they are coming forward with right, right so it is uh, definitely uh, that's why i said it is not a uh, easy system it's a tough system and sampling levels are very high ha so when they are spending four days in a factory we may think one day is enough why do they need to spend four days they have the reason for that because it's at par with the international norms sir ye next question le lete hain phoenix ka is pe hum discuss karenge baad mein yes, yes. Sure, sir. next question is from phoenix medical systems Uh, they would like to know the procedure for obtaining manufacturing license for class A and class B devices from SLA Tamil Nadu. We approached the office of state drug controller uh, Chennai and not still clear about the process. We are manufacturing our medical devices for more than two decades. Is it mandatory to get wholesale license or test license? What does those licenses refer? To? Uh. Should you appoint a pharmacist? Without in these, can't we get the manufacturing license? Using and to understand the process. These these all questions can be addressed by IMED. Point number one, I mean, they want to apply to state licensing authority for class A and class B. If they yes. are listening, they can. They we have explained the procedure. Yes. Right. For the manufacturing of license, there is no requirement of uh, drug sale license. right if they are going to market the product trading the product that is wholesale is required point number 3 we have already notified and published a draft notification 
those who are not having the sale license, they can approach the registration system. That is very, very simple. No pharmacist is going to be recruited there. Uh, right? right? So right. All, all these things are in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Right, sir. Uh, and to add that, uh, the IMS should make out the note of this point wise and they should give the reply to them so that they can understand. It's already happening, sir. From secretary, they're also clarifying. Uh, if, this, question could, this question could not have come to IMED if it could have been solved. This is a very general and simple question. We want that what is the policy issue because CDEC people are there, our two ADCs are sitting there. And if they are not able to approach or they apply the A and class A, and, what is the problem? We need to understand. They have not narrated in the in the question. Okay, next question. Next is from Nasan Medicals. Uh, as per uh, GSR 104E draft rules, application in the form of form MD41 needs to be submitted for registration certificate to sell, stock, exhibit, and offer for sale or distribute a medical device. They have given the definition. This is for IVDs. There is no information for the same on the website. Please guide us as to how one should proceed. Okay, I will explain, right? Yes. The uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has published a notification based on the request of the stakeholders the IMED, the MCHEM, the ADMI, okay? We consulted and we have a series of meetings and the stakeholders, what they want, that if they want to sell the product like nebulizer or blood glucose monitoring system or high blood pressure monitoring system, they are not supposed to obtain the wholesale license because the reason was that the pharmacy graduate is the requirement for obtaining the wholesale license, 20B and 21. The request of the stakeholders was well accepted and considered by government. And we have come out a notification and prescribing that you can adopt either one system. If you are holding already drug sale license, you continue with that. If you don't want to uh, obtain the wholesale license, then you come for the registration system. In registration system, just you have to give <coughs> your documents to the concerned state licensing authority. That will be the auto-generated system. The number will be generated and the audit will be carried out after issuing the number. Very lenient. So that will help our manufacturers and traders. Right. Thank you, sir. I have a question for CDAC. Uh, Ramaji, if I'll just come yes, in over yes. here. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev uh, from CDAC, many of the manufacturers uh, are being registered with the help of consultants. And consultants, when they are filling up the form, they are putting in their own email ID over there. Later on, the manufacturers need to switch the email ID from a consultant to their own email ID. How do they go around doing that? Can you guide us on that uh, from CDAC? So just mail ID is registered here. Yes, uh, what is the provision for that in the website? So website can change the change. Okay. 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 हां सर ईमेल आईडी चेंज कर सकता है कोई अपना यूजर ऐसा आईडी जो पहले से एग्जिस्ट ना करता हो बट ये ये मेरा मेरा जो है ना रिक्वेस्ट है सभी मैन्युफैक्चरर से कि ऐसा काम मत कीजिए प्लीज व्हेन यू आर अप्लाइंग योर रेयर लाइसेंस यू शुड नॉट डिस्क्लोज द ईमेल आईडी एंड ऑफ द ऑफ द कंसलटेंट प्लीज दैट इज नॉट फेयर एंड दैट इज दैट इज वायलेशन ऑफ द लॉ and if at all they have given, please get it changed. No, sir, there is such option. I have a challenge with those who are reading. I have a document that gives justification. Then it comes to you for your end of approval. If you approve it, then it will change. It doesn't happen that you want to do it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There's, there should be some check and balances. Yes, yes. But why, why manufacturers are using email ID and phone number of the consultants? 
राजीव जी सर बिकॉज इनिशियली दे आर नॉट फेमिलियर विद दोल प्रोसेस सो दल्टेंट्स आर हेल्पिंग टू फिल अप दी फॉर्म एंड रजिस्ट्रेशन सो वेन दे आर फिलिंग इट अप दल्टेंट इज यूजिंग हिज ओन ई मेल आई डी ओवर देयर एंड मैन्युफेक्चर आर नॉट अवेयर दे आर नॉट अवेयर अबाउट द सिस्टम एंड लेटर ऑन when they try to work with the website they find that uh, they're not able to access the website okay okay so they are they are hijacked by the consultants that is a problem <laughs> yes in that shall you want to say yes that also is a that. problem that is the problem so if uh, sanjeev ji have a look in the website and we should help our manufacturers by mistake if they have given the email id or phone number of of consultant so there should be a provision to get it changed okay ji sir right thank you sir okay oh. uh, next is from uh, pwmai the association uh, a couple of questions uh, uh, we would like to uh, the request is to include uh, the following questions clarity on clean room requirements for products classified under class a and b if possible can we have a list of consultants who can help in clean room setup and for obtaining iso 13485 are there any subsidies or any kind of schemes available for iso 13485 which we have addressed uh, what is the infrastructure changes uh, that will need to be done to existing facilities uh, so that it fits as per mdr licensing requirements if we are to make a new manufacturing facility what are the points or prerequisites that we should consider during the planning and facility designing stage itself and uh, are there any specific infrastructure requirements available under mdr for each class for flooring partitions air handling etc just like that it is as it is available for pharma units under fda can two products with one uh, product under md mdr and one product under pharma fda be manufactured in the same manufacturing unit or there has to be different uh, units for both the products many of the manufacturers registered with the help of consultants and consultants use their own email id this was already addressed so the, 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 these are the list of questions from uh, pw uh, mai sir there okay. are about uh, so regarding more than i would say 200 manufacturers or 300 manufacturers are covered under this category of products hmm. and most of them are new to medical devices so Uh, this is a big area because they came in for covid to make masks and pp coveralls and gowns and mostly they are non sterile some are sterile and uh, this is a very gray area that's where most of them have not been able to go in for the certification process because they don't know what clean room they are requiring so for iso 13485 the requirement i think dr sanjeev will address these two three questions dr sanjeev kumar gupta yes Yes, sir. So this I I am going to be talking about this in my in my presentation. So can we wait or should yes, we? Yes, we can wait. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we can wait. Yeah. And you cannot manufacture, you know, this pharma products and the medical device products in the same premise. All right. Uh, you want it me is, to? It, it is not ethical. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. This is two products uh, being manufactured. One product under MDR and another product under Pharma FDA. Ah, uh, bo both are manufactured in the same manufacturing unit. Yeah. Or uh, should uh, should the uh, manufacturing uh, facilities have to be different for both the products? Is what the question. Even even I am telling you, if you want to manufacture cardiac stent in one room and in another one room, you want to manufacture the IVD. Is it feasible? It is. You know, it is not advisable. Here, the the area should be dedicated as per the class and the nature of the problem. Sir, there are confusions. Uh, sir, Doctor Sanjeev here again. There are confusions at various levels. Like uh, there is this company called Primas Biotech in Hyderabad. So they are manufacturing the pharmaceuticals also. They are manufacturing IVD kits also. So IVD comes with thirteen four eight five, whereas the pharma doesn't fall into thirteen four eight five. but the local drug office apparently have advised them to include their pharma and ivd into one quality management system and also include pharma into 13485 so sanjeev ji sanjeev ji you are a you are a expert i am asking you for the drug formulation 
whether ISO 1345 is applicable? No, sir. No, that is what I am saying. But they say we got pressurized from the <laughs> local regulatory. No, 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 no. That no. in see, 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 see. For the drug formulation, always GMP is applied. Absolutely, Good manufacturing sir. practices. Yes, sir. For medical devices, quality yeah. management system is applied. Yes, you cannot club together. The requirement is entirely different. If you see the content of ISO 1345, the management responsibility is most important. The yes. non-conforming products, how to maintain the documents, you know, control of the documents, how to address the complaints. These are most important part. Yes. I mean, device is absolutely entirely different from drug. Devices are discovered. I mean, uh, designed, but drugs are discovered. GMP is applicable on drugs. QMS is applicable on the on the on the medical devices. Medical devices are having very short life cycle. Today we have one implant. As per the customer needs, the manufacturer can modify it. But drug is having the long life cycle. We have we need to check the biocompatibility in the medical devices. But in case of drugs, we need to evaluate the drug efficacy by virtue of the clinical trials. So there is an entirely difference. This, I do not agree with that. These should be two different uh, you know, entity and they should be manufactured in the separate location. Thank you. So the gray area is basically for products like uh, sanitizers or surgical dressings, for example, because then uh, many of the countries are treating them as medical devices and even IMED was treating it as a medical device, but uh, uh, GST and uh, the government has uh, thought it befitting to treat as a, a drug now. So there are certain gray areas over there where medical device manufacturers were making, for example, sanitizers or uh, dressing manufacturers were making band-aid and also surgical dressings, uh, uh, let which me, is... Let me, let me clarify you. I mean, this, there is a confusion. When we defined the scope of medical device rule, we put the surgical dressing and surgical bandages in the scope of the medical device rule. Internationally, these products are regulated as a medical device. Now, the manufacturers are not supposed to take license under the drug rules. They have to take the license in the medical device rule. Coming back to the sanitizer. Sanitizer is a drug, even in our country. They have to obtain a drug license. But the disinfectant, which are used to disinfect the medical devices, these are the medical devices. If you see the definition of the medical device, in the last one, the J part, the devices which are used to disinfect the medical devices are under the scope of the medical device rules. The other disinfectants are regulated as a drug. Okay, next question, please. I guess uh, we've come to the end of the Q and A session. Oh, great! That's all it is. And any queries, uh, industry can always reach out to IMED and maybe as a follow up uh, of the session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the uh, clear explanation. We appreciate. It. Thank you so much. So we will be still be continuing with the program. Uh, okay. We have Mr. Jory and Mr. Gupta over here to make uh, quick presentations. Right. And uh, they will take in some questions and uh, the other questions which uh, have come on the chat box. We'll be taking out a printout and we will try to uh, seek your expert expertise in case we're not able to answer them ourselves. Uh, we'll come back to you for your help to uh, answer some of them. Otherwise, from IMED, we will try to address them by emails and put them across also on our website over there. Rajiv we plan Ji, to do this on a monthly basis. Uh -huh. So on a rollover basis, we keep on trying to uh, help the manufacturers address this as we go forward. Today is the holy day. Today is the, you know, but we are there for industry. <laughs> We are sitting here for you. I was having the, some commitments. I have to take my wife to go out for shopping. I told no. I have to give my services to the our Indian manufacturers. Today is a is asked me. There was a puja, so I, so there was some you know you know puja in our our home also. I we finished you know quick early, and we were there for you. So thank you very much. And you, you just continue with the program. It was a wonderful program. We are there for you, for industry. Whatever we can help you out, we will definitely be plan. The Thank CDEC you. team, the Mr. Sanjeev, Mr. Mr. Shamni, Ms. Ajay Basil, they are all engaged for, for your today's workshop. Okay, so continue, Ramaji. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We would like to thank, thank Mr. Basil, Mr. Shamni, 
uh, Mr. Sanjeev for their excellent presentations and uh, a tour which they given of the website and also of the uh, various details for the registration processes. Thank you. Uh, yourself for being uh, so candid and forthright in answering all the questions so promptly. Uh, Mr. Taneja uh, came in briefly, but uh, he had to leave for his flight. Uh, Mr. Kosha uh, could not join in, but he has been kind enough to depute his assistant truck controller over here. So we will continue uh, with him. And uh, if, so if you want to leave, uh, we'll definitely excuse you. But from our side, we will continue with the program. No, no, and no. If no, anybody no. wants to stay from CDSO, uh, yeah. they're welcome to stay on and to address any residual questions which may come forward. We plan to extend the session uh, uh, until six o'clock. We were going to close at 5.30. But seeing the importance and the criticality of the issue, we'll extend till six o'clock. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. So, you Rama, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Rama, ma'am, uh, should yeah. I proceed ahead and uh, invite Anil Jauri, sir? Uh, one second. Just a second. Please. Sure. You want me to introduce, sir? No, no, no. I can introduce, but I just uh, I wanted a heads up if I right, could right. go ahead. Cool. Uh, moving on to the next segment of the webinar, I would now like to invite uh, Mr. Anil Jauri, sir, for uh, his presentation. And uh, he's an alumnus of IIT Kanpur, and he's also an ex CEO of NABCB, National Accreditation Board. Uh, he's a member uh, of UNFCCC. CDM Accreditation Panel Member, Yoga Certification uh, Board Chairman, SC, GCPC, CTSCA Lead Assessor, NABCB Lead Evaluator, APAC IEF Evaluator, and uh, as Rajiv Nath sir said right during his welcome address, he has retired, but he has been very enthusiastically supporting uh, all the startups and medical device manufacturers in whatever capacity. So I would now like to request uh, Anil sir to take it forward from here. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks, Aditi. Thanks, um, uh, and uh, you people who have invited me to explain some of the uh, ambiguity around, somebody used the word ambiguity around ISO 3485 certification. Uh, I have already answered uh, all the questions. I hope you can see the uh, slides right now. Yes, sir. They were visible. If you can put yeah, them okay. in a slideshow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I, I guess, uh, since Rajiv has said uh, that we are here to six o'clock, and even I have to leave at 5.30. Uh, uh, so I'm going to slightly cut short my presentation, but I would suggest that my uh, presentation can be shared with all. Uh, in whatever way you wish to and people can write to me and ask questions so i have given my website uh, sorry we're not website email id as well as my mobile number right on the first uh, slide and i'm going to cut it short i have quite explanatory but let me just touch the essentials uh, first is to understand what is the provision in mdr and this is a provision uh, uh, actually uh, it's a reproduction of what is written in mdr which is that you need a certificate of compliance with respect to ISO 13485 standard accredited by National Accreditation Board for Certification Body, Bodies or International Accreditation Program in respect of such medical units. So what it means is you need a certificate of ISO 13485 from a certification body. That certification body in turn should be accredited by either NABCB or an IF member body. And IF members are accreditation bodies. So that means it could be a foreign accreditation body as well. So that's why I answered somebody that BSI is still accredited by some foreign accreditation body, to my knowledge by ANR, for ISO 13485, and therefore that certificate is still valid as far as registration goes. So this is what the provision is, and we need to understand this provision. So ISO 13485 is the standard, it's made by ISO. In ISO, is uh, the member body from India is BIS. Uh, this one. What happened? Are you still seeing this uh, slide? Yes, sir. We can see this slide, but uh, we're on what is ISO 13485. Yeah, okay. 
So uh, ISO is the standard body uh, which develops these standards, International Organization for Standardization. BIS is the member from India in ISO. Please remember that ISO is only into standard setting, has nothing, nothing to do with certification at all. Please remember that because there are certification bodies going around claiming they are approved by ISO, which is not correct because ISO does nothing other than provide standards. Standards for industry, standard for certification bodies, standard for accreditation bodies, whole lot of standards, but standards and standards alone. And 13485 has no specific significance. Uh, as the standards go for publication, they are given a number by chronology. So it is 13485. But some numbering is reserved in ISO now 9000 series for quality management system. 14,000 series for environment management system, etc. Some uh, numbering has been reserved, but otherwise, it's chronology. NABCB is the accreditation body, uh, which is part of Quality Council of India, which is part of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And it has signed all the international equivalences. So, NABCB is equivalent to any accreditation body around the world, including for medical devices, QMS, for which also it has signed the international uh, MRA, what is called M MLA in IAF. Uh, multilateral mutual recognition arrangement and therefore if you have a certificate from an NABCB accredited CB with an NABCB logo it's internationally equivalent please remember that and I have given the website here you can go to NABCB website and look at uh, uh, NABCB activities and everything is there. IAF is International Accreditation Forum this is a body established in 1993 it's an association of accreditation bodies so in all countries almost now almost all countries have accreditation bodies sometimes more than one and they are all members of iaf nabcb from india is member of iaf in some countries there are multiple accreditation bodies for example usa has multiple it's a private sector model uh, canada has multiple japan has multiple accreditation bodies but in europe by law it's a single national accreditation body but in rest of the countries like countries around us, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, etc. These are governmental accreditation bodies and, you know, by, by virtue of market, they are alone. Uh, nobody, it's not such a lucrative rules. I can tell you accreditation bodies are pretty small. It's not a lucrative. Uh, so, it is IEF which actually supervises certification. Uh, but the, uh, one thing that you should remember that IEF is a private body in a way. ISO also is a private body because they, they are, uh, you know, they are not governmental bodies. And it's a voluntary mechanism. The mutual recognition arrangement is voluntary. And therefore, there is no obligation. I can be a certification body in India and I may not go to an IF member accreditation body. I may be an accreditation body which doesn't go to IF. There's no legal requirement. Please remember that. And that is where the problem is. So, what the, the MDR says is that you must go to an IF member body. Uh, similarly, there is an ILAC uh, uh, body called ILAC, which is for inspection and uh, testing. I just wanted to let you know, NABL is a member in ILAC. And labs also, if you get a test report with NABL logo, the test reports are internationally equivalent. These two bodies are actually set to merge in sometime in 2023, that is next year. It should become a single body, so we do not have to explain two bodies to you. ISO certifications, we are all aware about 9001, which came in 87. After that, a lot of management system certification standards have come. And I have also given some figures about the popularity of these standards. You can see, which is the most authentic figures are from ISO surveys. ISO does a survey to find out how much certification is taking place against its standards. And as you can see, uh, I think um, uh, medical device QMS is sixth among those uh, management system standards. The 9001, by far the most popular. 14,001 environment management system, 45,000 occupational health and safety, 27,001 is for uh, 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 information security, 22,000 is for food safety, and then 13,485, 25,656 certificates estimated around that time. But certifications of all kinds are there, so it's not only ISO certifications which are you are facing. Who certifies them? Well, there is, uh, anybody can set up a certification body. There's no legal requirement as such for me to register. Like you as medical device manufacturer have, are regulated. Certification bodies in India are not regulated. And most countries, they are not regulated. So anybody can set up. You can set up a private body, public body, partnership company, proprietorship company, uh, society, a trust, whatever. Uh, so anybody can set up. So how do you, how do you trust a certification body that will be the question and there are some types of certifications you should also be aware there are product certifications like ismr and ecmar in india 
there are process certifications like global gap and organic there are certain certificate certifications like training institutions be certified education be certified system certification of course we have talked about and there is also something called personal certification where individuals are certified uh, we have a scheme for yoga professionals in india uh, where i was involved in developing that welders are certified lift operators are certified there are globally there are number of uh, in personal certifications lot of personal certification is being done in the sector skill councils uh, which are set up in ministry of skill development so how do you distinguish an authentic certification body uh, because they are all private generally speaking government bodies uh, were there initially in india for example like mark and uh, bis but now there are a whole lot of uh, private certification bodies the only recognized means is because government bodies you may feel they follow some rules at least private how do you get assurance maybe by word of mouth maybe by brand name but the most reliable assurance is that they should be accredited accreditation is a third party attestation it is done by independent bodies uh, as per iso standards for their competence their impartiality and their consistent operation and uh, it applies to labs it applies to inspection bodies so you should go for an accredited lab you should go for an accredited certificate any kind of certification that you see you must ask for an accredited certificate because without accreditation an unaccredited certificate is just a piece of paper and you do not know whether that certification body is actually authentic or not when it follows the international norms or not uh, so as i said uh, it is uh, iia which supervises the uh, certification uh through the regional bodies so there are regional bodies in all uh, continents we are covered by asia pacific accreditation cooperation and there are standards written for all or all, all of us the regions have to follow certain requirements set by iia the accreditation bodies have to follow iso 17000 which is standard for us and um, uh, certification bodies have to follow standards for uh, qms it is iso 17021 which they have to follow. incidentally iif has an mou with iso as well as ilac so they all work in tandem although they are independent but they work in uh, cooperation uh, iif system is voluntary as i said but that is the only authentication although it's not required by law but that's the only authentication that a certification body is credible genuine follows international norms this is the international system iif and ilac are the at the top two bodies uh, we have uh, regional bodies five regional bodies today apac european accreditation cooperation iaac which is for both americas african accreditation cooperation and arab accreditation cooperation which is part of africa and part of uh, asia which is islamic in nature they have got together and they are part of iraq and they are all evaluated so this is how it works at each level there is evaluation so when aditi read out my biodata i am an iif evaluator which means on behalf of iif right now i am evaluating two uh, regions iaac and uh, iraq i am also an evaluator for asia pacific accreditation cooperation so i am going to evaluate hong kong's accreditation body uh, this year uh, and then accreditation bodies have 17011 accreditation bodies evaluate certification bodies or inspection bodies or labs like nabcb and nbl and though they they in turn inspect or test or certify products or processes or organizations and these are some of the standards so as you can see the entire chain is you know under evaluation and in, in our uh, word you know we have a saying that in god we trust rest all have to show evidence so that everybody gets evaluated nobody is trusted and this is how the system operates so what happens is if you got an iso 13485 certificate which is this standard at the bottom which is common worldwide you are you are certified by a certification body which is as per iso 7021 which is common worldwide it is accredited by an accreditation body like nabcb or ucas or anap in the us or a ucas in uk or dac in germany which is following is 70011 which is common worldwide which is under asia pacific accreditation cooperation peer evaluation system which is following certain rules as per iif which are common worldwide then the your certificate becomes internationally equivalent that's how your certificate becomes internationally equivalent so if you have a certificate of iso 13485 by an nabcb accredited certification body or a ucas accredited certification body that certificate is internationally equivalent. so how do you how do you said uh, see that they are authentic certification bodies because the problems are there are unaccredited certificates you have uh, you do not have an accreditation and you are issuing certificates uh, you are issuing certificates to guidance standards are the problem which uh, exists in the market there are private abs as i said iif system is not obligatory by law so they, i can set up an accreditation body 
and I don't join IAF. I join. I don't. In fact, there in India there is a uh, accreditation body which has never joined IAF or APAC, and it continues to operate privately. It is based in Bombay, and sometimes they are claiming accreditation from some body based in USA or the Europe or UK, and you can't locate uh, where those bodies are, and you don't know who they are. And there are a whole lot of them. I can assure you, there are a whole lot of them. Many of you, uh, Rajiv knows. He has given me probably hundreds certificates, uh, which are all I would call unauthentic. And um, the ministries do not know, industry doesn't know, government agencies do not know, purchase organizations do not know. So people are getting duped by using such certificates. Typical certificate will carry the name of and address of the organization. It will carry the scope of certification. What are the product range? It will not specifically list out every product, but it will cover your product range. Uh, it will also uh, give the name of the standard or the scheme. If you are ICMED certified, it will give the name of the scheme. If you are 13 certified, it will give the name of the standard. It will give you a date of issue and expiry, and the, the period is fixed, three years, normally three years. So you'll get a three-year certificate. Uh, there will be a unique identification number. Yeah, there should be a name or an address of the certification body itself, logo of the certification body, then the accreditation symbol. This is important. The accreditation body's logo will also be present on the certificate, and that's your guarantee that it's an accredited certificate. Again, as I said, there is no law which requires accreditation, but that's the best uh, possible option for you. And sometimes there may be IF mark also because we are IF MLA signatories. Uh, if the the certification bodies are free to use IF mark also, the certificate could carry. IF mark, which will be another form of recognition that it's internationally. So here I am some showing you some certificates. You can have a look at this. Looks like a beautiful certificate, just given yesterday to me by somebody. But unfortunately, the accreditation body is not a member of IF, so should not be acceptable to CDS. If you go to the IF website, which is if.nu, uh, I think I gave the uh, address. Uh, you can list, you can see the list of accreditation bodies which are members of IF. So this is not a valid certificate. It's not only 3485, but you will get C mark certificates also, which are not by notified bodies. Now, please remember, C certificates are issued by notified bodies in Europe. They have to be notified bodies. Yet certificates are issued by non-notified bodies. Again, another certificate where some some accreditation uh, body logo is there on the left side, but it's not there in IAF. Another C certificate we claim without uh, the certification body being a notified body. And here is a proper certificate. Uh, I deliberately used a certificate which shows logo of an accreditation body, which you might wonder what is that, KAB, and you can go to IAF website and you'll find it is Korean Accreditation Board. And IAF mark is there, and the certification body name is there, which is LMS Certification Limited in Lucknow here. So this, on the face of it, this is the proper certificate, which is what you should be looking for. IAF has now started initiative. There's an IAF search, search uh, website. It is still in process, so it's not complete. So if your name does not figure there, don't think that your certificate is not genuine. But yes, this is data coming from certification bodies, coming from accreditation bodies, and IAF's own data. So these are the three inputs. And this seems to be one answer to all these certificates going around. We could be in future having a look at IAF search, uh, search uh, uh, directory, and we could get a you know, uh, get to know which is the certificate, which is valid. So what my advice to you is that you should must go for a certification body, which is accredited, preferably locally, so that you can, if you have a problem, you can talk to someone. Uh, my own advice to medical device manufacturers normally would be pick up a notified body for your 3485 certificate also. Uh, it is under, under some kind of, you know, once it is notified body is under some kind of obligation of uh, CDSU also, so thoda dar jada lagega unko. Here are very government. Let let me put it this way. Uh, you should uh, look at the list of uh, the members of IAF, which is specified by CDSU on this website, IAF.nu. You should also look at the scope of accreditation. Now, IAF ISO thirteen four eight five certificate is granted for certain scopes. I have listed some of them here. Uh, these are the eight scopes which are there, and then there are, within that there are technical areas. So uh, it is just possible that a certification body may be accredited for not all these scopes, maybe accredited for four or five of these scopes. So how would you know? You can look at the certification body's scope of accreditation on the accreditation body's website. All accreditation bodies maintain websites. All certification bodies are listed. Their scopes are listed. Their addresses are listed. You can see for them for yourself. 
but your safest bet is rather than getting into all these technicalities you must have the accreditation body logo on your certificate either nbcb logo or ucas logo or dax logo on your certificate that's the best guarantee for you, rather than getting into all these details uh, and preferably if logo because that also is a good thing to have because of uh, trash leak rates but ab logo is sufficient to tell you that it's trash leak and in case you have a doubt you should drop a mail to nbcb is best place to tell you whether the certificate is okay or not of course i can also tell you uh, be having been in nbc for so many years if you show me a certificate i can tell you in 5 minutes whether it's a genuine certificate so this is uh, what i wanted to share with you now in my later on i realized in my presentation there was also a topic given he was about consultants now unfortunately there is no system right now for certifying consultants i have tried very hard i am sorry i have failed to persuade many bodies to start a system of certifying consultants so today if amed is maintaining a website a list of consultants on website well that's your most reasonable uh, uh, you know way of going about or i don't know rama is here and she can tell you whether uh, ccc uh, which is she she is chair of consultants consortium in chennai now there is an all india consultants association whether there could be some help in identifying uh, good consultants because frankly there is no system prevalent today about certifying competent consultants so you are uh, it's it's difficult uh, i know it's difficult but uh, you have to go by either checking with your counterparts you know fellow industry members or uh, rajiv is doing the service by maintaining a list or ccc could help you get across to uh, to consultants thank you very much thank you anil sir uh, for that enlightening uh, talk on iso 13485 in fact i am receiving some of the queries on whatsapp messages <laughs> but in the interest of time i would like to proceed ahead and uh, invite the final speaker for the webinar today dr sanjeev kumar gupta uh, to talk about the clean room requirements as per uh, the compliance and regulatory body so uh, a little uh, introduction about him so dr gupta is a qms regulatory and technical professional with 25 years of experience in the field of medical devices and uh, in retro diagnostic devices he is a phd in biotechnology from iit roorkee and csir uh, igib uh, with that i would request dr gupta to please uh, come in thank you thank you sir thank you uh so you, so your voice is a bit patchy i think uh, this could be due to a bandwidth issue okay now it's better now it's better i'm going to switch the video hmm chill sure. on the video can be turned off otherwise is the voice okay hello so oh, i think if you will just uh, 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 speak without the video, video it might give you better bandwidth yes for the presentation already uh, switched to ajeev ji so okay now so still not okay if you will start the presentation we will see and if you can put off your camera see my screen uh, not yet okay not it can you see this now yes 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 yeah all right okay so thank you everyone thanks organizers and uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my experience and my knowledge about the clean rooms for the benefit of industrial partners here and the people who have uh, gathered and to listen and to understand couple of these things it's been going very good session i i hope we had more time on this but then it is okay to go ahead with this so i'm going to be talking about clean room guidelines uh, for uh, which is in the agenda it is written class a and class b products sterile and non sterile products what needs to be addressed by the manufacturer so 
in the interest of the time and a lot of other factors, I've summarized it to very less number of slides. I thought we could answer more questions because, but some of the time has gone by. So I will proceed with whatever I compiled with so that we can understand. I hope many of the people who have joined, they remember this particular news, which was there in the last year. And we all saw a couple of places where uh, the, the swabs were packed and shown uh, you know, in, in a house it is being done. Now swab is something which goes inside our body. And if it is produced, packed and prepared like this, I think none of the participants would like to use it provided they know it. So sometimes knowing now matters. And the factor which works for selection of a clean room or setting up the infrastructure is uh, the most important line which says knowing now matters. We know our products, we know what is going to be the use of these products. And uh, it is expected that we accordingly take cognizance of the requirements related to that product. So the key question is from unhygienic to hygienic, from hygienic to cleaner and from cleaner to the clean room. A choice has to be made. And what are the factors which help make a choice? And how, and we should be connecting it with the quality management system and the regulation. That's what I'm going to talk about in, my, in brief for a couple of my slides. So last year in January, 2021, there was an industry aware session, you know, in which I was a speaker again on the preparedness. And I was talking about that there were challenges related to personnel with reference to qualification and trainings, QMS and quality culture in the organizations because many more organizations will come into the, into the foray of regulation. And of course, the infrastructure. So upgrade was suggested in 2021 January. And we are here in the March talking about a couple of more things almost at the same level, which is a cause of concern. So it's several months, several more sessions have been done. The question is why there is a gap. This gap certainly needs to be addressed. And I always tell in our professional group WhatsApp of the consultants that the first lead has to be taken by the manufacturer because it's your baby and you have to nurture your baby. We all know, many of us may just not know, but many of, most of us know that the classification is hovering on the basis of risk and dividing things into class A, class B, class C, and class D. But when we look at it, technically speaking, if I'm talking about an absorbent cotton wool, although it is low risk, you know, but if I, if I use an absor absorbent cotton wool directly on my open wound, and if it is not manufactured in a clean area, it is going to be dangerous. I mean, with 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 vis a vis and hard wall, which has been implanted into a patient. Same goes for alcohol swabs and surgical dressings. Therefore, it is very, very important to understand that let us not try to justify that I am into the lower classification that I should not have a manufacturing facility which doesn't look up to the standards, which others accept. You know, standards and our acceptance is based on sometimes if you take our individual examples, the better clothes we wear, Sometimes a better acceptance outside our home, it matters. In some cases, it may not matter, but most of the time it does matter. The way we speak, it matters. The way we present, it matters. So when it comes to the manufacturing, it is sum total of everything. And if you have to technically understand you know, what clean room is, so it's basically a room, uh, though it's a very trivial information, which I'm giving to many, many of you know it, the clean room is in which the number of airborne particles, which could be biological and non-biological, is controlled. Clean room is one which is constructed and used in a manner to minimize the introduction, generation, and retention of particles, which goes to the, uh, the earlier statement. A clean room is the one which can, have, which can help maintaining temperatures, humidity, and pressures can also be controlled. And it is always surrounded by the ancillary areas, which is supported areas. So these are these are four important points for a clean room, which we have to remember. So it will connect us. You know, when when we look at the smaller organizations or manufacturers who may have a manufacturing area and an office, an office may have an air conditioner. It may have you know more closed atmosphere. That is a you know relatively a clean room for the whole setup. 
so that's a difference which we have to really understand and these are the couple of points which connects it to that now what consists of a clean room when we talk about it is if there is an ac room is it a clean room if there is an ac room with an airlock is that a clean room is there an ac room with ahu system for coarse air filtration is that is a clean room an air classified room without people in process control is that is a clean room an air classified room plus no uniform worn by people is a clean room an air classified room plus clean room on uh, you know uniform worn is that a clean room so we have to really understand and perceptions will change as per the convenience and lot of other factors so this is what we have to understand what exactly is a clean room as i said there these this is the purpose of the clean room and if you have to understand there could be several subsections of a clean room which fits based on the uh, the product which we are going to manufacture now apart from that a lot of time we ask a question why clean room okay the answer is it could be a process requirement it could be a customer requirement it could be about the image of the company times have changed please remember that from uh, earlier than 2017 when the ndr rules had not come the manufacturing was done in a very very different way and once it comes into the regulation your image your customers and your process would look at it very differently and of course a combination of everything goes to regulatory considerations and regulatory wants it and sometimes the auditor perceptions so we can't be fighting with each thing around us because we believe that we don't need a clean room and why do we believe that we don't clean we don't need a clean room we simply say it's easiest thing to say no process requirement if you go to the risk management many people will say no risk no uh, and most of the time you find that risk management is done in simple manner by saying no risk now that is not the intent of risk management the intent of risk management is to look at the risk and find a control which could be of different types same where when we talk about why clean room and why no clean room we have to understand what we are trying to answer some people will say no 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 my process doesn't need it some people will say no i have no customer who's asking for it i want to save my cost i'm already hard pressed because of the cost and regulation has not specified it so I'll, if they have not specified why don't i take the advantage it saves my cost and auditor did not ask for last 10 years any of my auditors financial auditor or any auditor you know they didn't ask now why should i do it even if you had 13485 for last 10 years and auditors did not ask you you seek a refuge behind that that no 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 it is since auditors did not ask i won't have so the choice has to be made what you want to achieve you want to achieve that your process is good process is complying with the customers are happy to look at your manufacturing facility your image of your company you know is very good i have seen lot of website where people say state of the art manufacturing facility i can tell you 90% of those people will not be able to explain what exactly the state of art word means okay this is a problem so this problem needs to be addressed by understanding things much better and how do we understand that's a big question what and how you know first thing is you have to make a decision it is a uh, it's a cost of quality it's cost of appraisal of your product as well as of your company and its cost of prevention of the bad quality of your product so you have to make a decision it's immaterial whether you are a small company or a bigger company the extent may vary the cost varies with the extent that's what has to be understood okay what regulation looks at it they want safety and performance and many times you will find there are some illogical statement in the regulation also he say how clean room is actually going to you know impact the performance of a grade a or class a product which is going to be sterilized before use okay how is a clean room going to be making uh, impact on its performance there are issues related to it these are debatable areas these are gray areas there is no doubt but if you go back and look at this you will find an address more of the gray areas from the system now different like i give you example like you know there are different catheters not the the different catheters have different classes a b c d but if you look at the use of these catheters more or less they are very close to the patients they are very closely connected to the patients okay so imagine if somebody is making class a catheters cannot say that i won't have a clean room okay it's about it's about so many things that you need to have a clean room okay but of course 
it is not specified by the regulation so you fit into this regulation has not specified so we we should look at what we want to do it and how does it come to you that's a very important point i am bringing you to clause 6.3 of ISO 13485-2016 version, where it says if you are aiming for 13485, you should have complete specification for your building workspace and associated utilities. Where do you get this information from? This information is which you know, how you are going to manufacture your product, what are the processes, what are the areas required, how it is going to do. I very strongly believe that it's a challenge for smaller companies, but I can also tell you that you also have solutions to it. The day you decide I have to do it, 50% of your challenges are over. 50% is where the entire regulator and entire industry is going to work for you. Same way when you move to 6.4, it again talks about the work environment. So whichever class you are manufacturing, you're going to be proving that your work environment is good and there is a contamination control. Again, please look at it. Contamination control is open-ended, but it has to be made specific to your product. Where does it come from? Increasing bio burden is a contamination. Increasing particle counts is a bio burden. Leaving unwanted, uh, you know, paper and this and that on the packaging is again, you know, contamination on the products and everything. So one manufacturer need to identify what is the work environment which is best for my product processing and how do I identify what kind of contaminations are there which can be controlled. When we go to a restaurant, sometimes we find a hair strand in the food, okay? And you will find waiter is wearing this, somebody is wearing this, but some people had removed it, it came into the food. We get very, very worked up. Just imagine if some, something like this goes into the product, which you are selling when somebody opens your primary packaging. It may not create havoc, but you have you spoiled your image, you have spoiled so many things, okay? Then comes clause 7.5, that's production and service provision. It says your infrastructure should be qualified. Now, if you have just one room, what will you qualify? If you if you really set it up nicely, that you can do. Qualification can be very simple. Qualification can be very very complex. So that's where some knowledge and some specific understanding will come to you. And we have been talking about the, the consultants. You know, I want to make one point very clear. Please make sure that your consultants are not employees of the other companies. You have solved half of your problems. As of now, in the country, it is happening. The employees of one company are working as consultants on BTS. This is not allowed in the, in the rules also and regulations also. So don't try to save that money. It is only a few thousand bucks probably. Don't go for such kind of consultants. You will not face problems. All they do is cut, copy, paste, and you find a lot of companies' name coming into your documents also. Another important aspect which, which focuses on infrastructure in 13485 is 7.5.2 cleanliness of the product. It is a responsibility of the manufacturer to ensure that they demonstrate the cleanliness of the product during the manufacturing and after the manufacturing. It is very categorically required to identify what are your cleaning steps? And if you identify your cleaning steps, you may realize that having a clean room is also helping in cleanliness of your product. So you need to understand this, okay? Going to 7.5.11, preservation of product. Preservation is not just putting something into minus 20 or adding benzoic acid to it or citric acid to it. Preservation is again, a very, very important aspect of medical device manufacturing. And it wants during processing, Okay, that also is linked with the cleanliness of the product and bio burden and particle burden. So many more things. How do you preserve it across the manufacturing processes? It's very, very important. And this is how, you know, in, in our MDR 2017, the NHL A, uh, I think CDSCO has done a very nice thing that they have provided this. And let me tell you, all these classifications of the room ISO class, which are written in the third column, they have come because we, the members of MDR drafting team have suggested this. CDSU didn't know this. We all have suggested that is why these classifications are there. And most of it, you would find that it's either eight or nine, you know, for some it is five or seven ISO classification. Obviously you will also find that those, those medical device, um, uh, classification is of the higher level. So 
if you are talking about A and B, I would say that classification of ISO classification of eight or nine or maximum nine is going to be fitting into the definitions of it for the lower class uh, uh, medical devices. Okay, so a lot has been provided, which is again, you know, you will find that you can correlate, please go through it, understand your products and go through it. Like for example, surgical dressing, weaving, assembly, engaging and primary, prime. they're very categorically said nine. Okay, once it is nine and uh, Ravi Kanji was saying that you can see the descriptions in the classification and other things, try to match it. If you are there, the same thing applies to you as well, go for it. And you can, one can always decide that, okay, nine is the end point. So if nine is there, you, you, you are pretty safe. And then you should also know that there is something called ISO 14644, which talks about the clean rooms. It has several subsections, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. You don't have to buy this standard. You don't have to read this standard completely, but sometimes you can go to the Google and look at some look at some PPTs into Google and try to learn about the standard. You will get some fair knowledge. Okay? That's very, very important. And there's another standard called 14698. If yes, if any of the class A or B product where you really need to demonstrate the biocontamination control, <coughs> In association with 14644, you also have to look at 14698. In general, if you look at ISO classifications from 1 to 9, and <coughs> sorry, it's about the particle counts of more than 5 micrometers uh, and bigger than 5 micrometers. Okay, you don't really have to get into those details unless your process requires it, but you can still make a choice. And then some people always ask what are the required air changes. So air changes are also defined very nicely based on in the standard. And if you want more, there is there is a slide which will tell how you're going to get more. So this is again, you know, some some basic technical things have hooked up, but you don't really need to be knowing each and everything of it. Some of the technical people can understand more, and accordingly you will have to see how air changes, how much filter coverage, how much isolation, what kind of classification, what's happening, how much we want to do it. There is a way to do it. How do you do it? I have tried to put this process for you. Map your process. The requirements may be graded as per process stages. What it means is that map your process of requirement of the environment control. Okay. The point two, map your process environmental conditions, and these can be graded. The entire factory need not be a clean room. All process stage need not be clean room. So you decide which is my most critical area, which I need to have a clean room. And then you can decide several more things. What do you decide? What, what do I want it to be designed at? What is going to be my address requirement? What is going to be my at work requirement? I'm taking you back to a slide. Please remember that all these, all these classifications, ISO class, which have been given, this is given at rest. Okay, that is why your best bet is to select something which is at rest. Okay, so that you can say, you have told me this, I have taken this. Then another important aspect is map your production capacity load. Many a time there is a mismatch based on capacity load versus the planning. So please do it very, very nicely and extensively. And once you've got your production capacity load, you please also map occupancy in terms of load and traffic because that can make or break on a clean room operation. You may decide a smaller clean room. I have seen one factory I won't name. I have seen they claim it is, uh, it is air conditioned, is it humidity control, but area given to one person in that room is less than two by two, okay? Which is very, very bad in terms of making or claiming something state of the art. So it is very, very important that we also take care of the occupancy in terms of load and traffic. And once you've got all this one, two, three, four, five, please write it down as your user requirement specification. Many a times what happens is we start thinking from a vendor point of view. Vendor should think on the contrary from your point of view. So if you get your URS right, you will get your vendor to think right. And many of the vendor will say, oh, I made this pharmaceutical unit, that pharmaceutical unit. I don't need that. Maybe you don't need that. So unless you've specified your own URS, I'm sorry, you have to put your time, you have to put your understanding. Don't just try to be dependent on people who are going to be teaching you every now and then. If you have attended one such session, please spend 
on our next 24 hours or 48 of working hours to understand and consolidate your thought process on this subject. But the point I'm saying is, if you're hearing me today, make sure that next week your URS is ready so that you won't forget what you learned into different seminars and lectures. What happens is we learn and then we start working something else. And again, it becomes zero because reception is never more than 40%. So we've been already there three hours. Into it. So once you get your URS, get your vendor and finalize your design qualification. Okay. Because regulation wants to look at it, DQ, IQ, OQ, and PQ. You may have IQ, OQ, PQ, but if you don't have DQ, you have a gap, 25% gap. So if you first have a DQ, then get it installed. And once you have installation, get IQ, OQ, PQ. Since there is no more time here today, there is a distinct difference between IQ, OQ, and PQ. And IQ can be very simple. And many a times the IQ given by the vendors is pathetic. Okay, so we can, uh, the other thing is that instead of looking at webinars like this, why not arrange training? It might cost you a day's cost for a training, but your understanding on this particular subject might enhance several fold. It is not, it is not, it is one time cost in your entire operations that you are having the training. So, you know, someone can really explain you what is DQ, IQ, OQ, PQ clearly, and then you can also define what is going to be my extent. Okay. But if you really look at it, I'm giving you more information. If you have to process environmental conditions, you have to see, you can look at temperature requirements, humidity requirements, lighting requirements. If you have to look at your production capacity load, you have to see the area, number of machines, the ancillary requirements, the shifts and the utilities. Sometimes you design clean rooms, you're running three shifts, nobody knows what's happening to the field. Map your occupancy, head counts, in and out counts and shifts. So there's so much of information which one needs to capture before you go to a vendor. Vendors are there to do good, good work for you, but they don't understand your process. They only understand how they are going to design with minimal information. No, don't do that. You understand your process, define everything into your URS and then go for it. And then please never for never ever forget that when you are whenever you are trying to get a clean room, you need many things to be established. Okay. You need to get cost right. You need to understand additional space requirements, accessibility, process necessities, tidiness around everything. You know, not having a clean room and you you fill it with, with material and you don't keep it tidy, it is no clean room. It is just a room. So what a clean room is, you have to make it an operationally clean room. That's important. Okay, And then, of course, you understand that ancillary area is also required around your clean rooms. I also want to touch upon for just for understanding the cost for setting up clean room varies from just don't take it verbatim, just giving you a hint that from rupees thousand to five thousand per square feet, depending on various requirements which you want into the system. Okay, uh, a clean room can be there without age. A clean room can be there with age. The cost will change. The clean room can be without view panels. The clean room can be with view panels. Clean room can be a huge room. There are no partitions. Your cost is going to be lower. Just give me a minute. Just give me 30 seconds, please. I think we've lost uh, Mr. Sanjeev. No, I, I'm back, sir. I'm back, sir. Actually, I have some emergency in the family, so I received a call from there. So I'm back, sir. Yeah. So this is about pricing. And uh, then I also want to give some of the heads up to the people that, you know, we also need to understand what is the duration. So duration can be from three months to nine months, depending on the capacity you want to convert into a clean room facility. And it, it, it will obviously depend on the size of the facility. The time has to be kept in the mind. And what the manufacturer is supposed to do after they've installed a clean room is that they're required to do preventive maintenance and annual qualification for continued effectiveness. It's very, very important aspects of the clean room. So, so I'm sorry, this, this is my last slide for this because I've told you, I, I, I told you that I'm going to be speaking briefly. 
but please understand that there is some do's understand requirement it's you who have to understand arrange resources implement it smartly and include this into your quality manuals don't hire good evening happy weekend consultant they give you no idea don't take shortcuts and don't buy certificates i just bring that into the picture thank you very much if, if there are questions i would be happy to answer and i hope that these couple of slides have served the purpose of this requirement to some extent thank you very much thank you thank you so much uh, dr gupta uh, uh, dr gupta if we go back to uh, the slide which was uh, uh, tabled by ramaji from pwmi uh, seeking uh, inputs on the classification of the non sterile and sterile uh, various pp components like masks and coveralls so would it be okay to say that uh, class 9 uh, for a non sterile and class 8 for a sterile would be good enough yes sir definitely and when we say that we want it at rest our uh, our expenses also go down and our maintenance costs also goes down because if you want iso class 8 or 9 in operation then the cost will go up in terms of setting up the facility yes is normally at rest always yeah. and uh, by my experience uh, i can share my experience with everybody a, a class 9 clean zone can be achieved by using an air washer like you have in a cinema hall you don't have to do any air conditioning or it can also be achieved uh, but that of course gives a higher humidity it can also be achieved very easily by using a uh, i would say a, a split air conditioner uh not by a window air conditioner but by a split ac you can easily achieve that uh, level of particulate uh, contamination uh, clean zone uh, nine over there but for yes uh, uh, uh between clean zone nine and clean zone clean room eight uh, there is a gap and for clean room eight you definitely do need to have a central ac yes that's correct sir thank you so for non sterile products should not be an issue you are just trying to control dust contamination but for a sterile product you have to go one step forward and you need to have central ac you don't need to pull back the air from the bottom of the room by having return ducts uh, coming at the floor level both supply and return can be from the ceiling yes but when you go for a higher level uh, clean room 7 uh, then you need to have the return ducts uh, pulling in the air from the floor level and in that case you need to have a higher throughput of uh, air changes per hour uh, anything from 30 to 50 air changes are required depending upon the number of people in your uh, clean room and the positive pressure that you have to maintain in the clean room uh, so you have to limit the fresh air intake in your clean room most of the clean rooms the problem i've seen has been that there have too many air leakages in the ceiling and in the partitions and they lose out the heat and they lose out the air pressure on that and that adds to the cost and to compensate that then you are pulling in more fresh air which then you have to pull down and then clean up more which again adds to the cost so having a very tightly sealed partitions having very tightly sealed uh, ceilings is very very important in the actual construction of the clean room with this we would like to uh, uh, close our sessions uh, thank you uh, dr vikant ji abhi you are still here with us yes. and your whole team now i like to thank uh, dr sanjeev gupta excellent presentation thank you sir how thank he you. has ex explained the clean room that is very very important and he he refer our you know appendix of schedule 5 so i was listening this iso this class 7 8 9 and, and you rightly said because if 1% absorbent put and which is sterile and if sterility is compromised and if you are putting on the wound it may cause harm it is very very important to control the temperature the humidity the painting and the cleanliness of the room for the low class medical devices thank you you welcome sir if you have any further question we are we are there for you Oh, what do you want to say? Yes, uh, 
So thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, I don't think so we have any further question. Although in the Q&A box, we have around 253 questions posted by the audience. So what I'll do perhaps is uh, I will compile all these questions and pass it on to Rama ma'am and then have them circulated uh, amongst our panelists so that they, they these questions can be responded uh, in the most appropriate manner. I hope that is OK with all the panelists who are still here with us. Yes, I think that makes a good sense. Many of them are I've seen are quite common. Many actually have also been already been addressed and answered uh, during the various discussions in the presentation. So that will also filter down, but it will be good to document the answers uh, over there. And uh, what we will do is that uh, we will uh, prepare the answers and circulate to all the AMED members and also put on our website. Also request CDSA to update their FAQ uh, part of their website. And uh, we will then do a follow-on meeting uh, or a webinar on this, uh, where if there are still uh, verbal clarifications which people want to seek on these uh, uh, queries, we will uh, try to address that accordingly with the necessary experts and the regulators over there. Okay, hey, sir. With this, we <laughs> come to the end of the uh, webinar. Thank you, everyone, for your time and uh, your valuable uh, information, experience, and everything else. I'm sure the medical manufacturing fraternity would benefit a lot from such webinars. In the last, I would like to thank Aditi also. She conducted the <laughs> workshop very well. <laughs> so that was the least I could do. <laughs> but thank, means a lot. thank you, Aditi. Thank you you thank conducted you. very well, and we tried our level best to, you know, clarify all the clarifications and, you know, questions of our manufacturers. They should come forward for the registration part. They should apply for the class A and class B. The, the eminent persons like Dr. Sanjeev Gupta, they can help them how to create the environment for manufacturing of our class A and class B medical devices. And in the last but not the least, IMED is already there for their manufacturers, for their, for their members. They can make out a FAQs at their own and they can percolate to all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also request uh, once again to all the delegates who are over here listening in. Uh, there are, I expect, nearly 900 people to apply as soon as possible for registration. Please apply for registration, give undertaking. You may not be able to achieve the certification in one month's time, we can understand. But at least you have a registration number under applied for. And then we will try to negotiate to get more time for you. But it's difficult to negotiate if you've not applied for it. So if you have applied for it, even the regulator may be looking at you in more concessionally. But if you're operating a plant without applied for registration, that means you're not willing to come under the registration process. You will be looked at differently from a regulator's angle. So that is the first step you need to achieve. And we will keep on trying to assist you with these webinars. And uh, we would like to thank once again, Dr. Vikan Sharmaji for uh, his patience and uh, forthright, uh, very honest, uh, and friendly nature of uh, answering all the queries in a very candid manner and by his uh, team, assisted by Mr. Basil, uh, Madam Shamniji, and uh, Mr. Sanjeev from CDAC. Also, I want to thank Mr. Anil Jori, who always takes time out to help the manufacturers uh, collectively and individually. And also Mr. Sanjeev Gupta, who always has been quite perturbed as to what kind of uh, issues are being raised and why people are not coming forward and being part of the regulatory process and not registering themselves. Thank you very much. And the last, of course, thanks is to IIT Kanpur for uh, giving us the platform and allowing us to bridge not only to manufacturers, but also startups and budding engineers and entrepreneurs over there. So wonderful collaborative uh, efforts by everybody and keep it up. Thank you. OK, thank you. Rishabh, you can stop the recording. <clears throat> and we can end the session.